Lesson one. 私人谈话 A private conversation. 上星期我去看戏 Last week I went to the theater. 我的座位很好 I had a very good seat. 戏很有意思 The play was very interesting. 但我却无法欣赏 I did not enjoy it. 一青年男子与一青年女子坐在我的身后。A young man and a young woman were sitting behind me. 大声地说着话 They were talking loudly. 我非常生气 I got very angry. 因为我听不见演员在说什么 I could not hear the actors. 我回过头去怒视着那一男一女 I turned round. I looked at the man and the woman angrily. They did not pay any attention. 最后我忍不住了 In the end, I could not bear it. 又一次回过头去 I turned round again. 生气地说，我一个字也听不见了 I can't hear a word. I said angrily. 不关你的事，那男的毫不客气地说 It's none of your business," the young man said rudely. "This is a private conversation." This is a private conversation. Lesson two: Breakfast or lunch? That is a Sunday. It was Sunday. And on Sunday, I was never up early. I never get up early on Sundays. I sometimes stay in bed until lunch time. 上个星期天我起得很晚 Last Sunday I got up very late. 我望望窗外 I looked out of the window. 外面一片昏暗 It was dark outside. 鬼天气，我想又下雨了 What a day! I thought. It's raining again. 正在这时，电话铃响了。Just then, the telephone rang. 是我姑母露西打来的。It was my aunt Lucy. 我刚下火车，她说，我这就来看你。I've just arrived by train, she said. I'm coming to see you. 但我还在吃早饭，我说。But I'm still having breakfast, I said. What are you doing? She asked. I'm having breakfast. I repeated. 天啊，她说。Dear me, she said. 你总是起得这么晚吗？现在已经一点钟了。Do you always get up so late? It's one o'clock. Lesson three. Please send me a card. 明信片总搅得我假日不得安宁 Postcards always spoil my holidays. 去年夏天我去了意大利 Last summer I went to Italy. 我参观了博物馆，还在公园里坐了坐 I visited museums and sat in public gardens. 一位好客的服务员教了我几句意大利语。A friendly waiter taught me a few words of Italian. 之后还借给我一本书。Then he lent me a book. 我读了几行，但一个字也不懂。I read a few lines, but I did not understand a word. 我每天都想着明信片的事。Every day I thought about postcards. 假期过得真快，可我还没有给我的朋友们寄过一张明信片。My holidays passed quickly, but I did not send cards to my friends. 到了最后一天，我做出了一项重大决定。On the last day, I made a big decision. 我早早起了床，买来了三十七张明信片。I got up early and bought. Thirty-seven cards. 我在房间里关了整整一天，然而竟连一张明信片也没写成。I spent the whole day in my room, 
but I did not write a single card. Lesson four. 激动人心的旅行 An exciting trip. 我刚刚收到弟弟蒂姆的来信 I have just received a letter from my brother Tim. 他正在澳大利亚 He is in Australia. 他在那儿已经住了六个月了 He has been there for six months. Tim is an engineer. 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 He has just bought an Australian car, and has gone to Alice Springs, a small town in the centre of Australia. He will soon visit Darwin. From there, he will fly to Perth. 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 So he is finding this trip very exciting. Lesson five. 无错号之余 No wrong numbers. 詹姆斯斯科特先生在希尔伯里有一个汽车修理部。现在他刚在平赫斯特买了另一个汽车修理部 Mr. James Scott has a garage in Silbury. And now he has just bought another garage in Pinhurst. Pinhurst is only five miles from Sydney. But Mr. Scott is trying to get a new repair shop to fix his car. So he bought twelve wheels. Pinhurst is only five miles from Sydney, but Mr. Scott cannot get a telephone for his new garage. So he has just bought twelve pigeons. 昨天一只鸽子把第一封信从平赫斯特带到希尔伯里 Yesterday, a pigeon carried the first message from Pinhurst to Silbury. 这只鸟只用了三分钟就飞完了全程 The bird covered the distance in three minutes. 到目前为止。斯科特先生从一个汽车修理部向另一个发送了大量索取备件的信件和其他紧急函件。Up to now, Mr. Scott has sent a great many requests for spare parts and other urgent messages from one garage to the other. 就这样，他开始了自己的私人电话业务。In this way. He has begun his own private telephone service. Lesson six. Percy Buttons. Percy Buttons. 我刚刚搬进了大桥街的一所房子 I have just moved to a house in Bridge Street. 昨天一个乞丐来敲我的门 Yesterday, a beggar knocked at my door. 问我要一顿饭和一杯啤酒 He asked me for a meal and a glass of beer. 作为回报，那乞丐头顶地倒立起来，嘴里还唱着歌。In return for this, the beggar stood on his head and sang songs. 我给了他一顿饭。I gave him a meal. 他把食物吃完，又喝了酒。He ate the food and drank the beer. 然后把一块乳酪装进衣袋里走了。Then he put a piece of cheese in his pocket and went away. 后来一位邻居告诉了我他的情况 Later, a neighbor told me about him. 大家都认识他。他叫珀西巴顿斯 Everybody knows him. His name is Percy Buttons. 他每月对这条街上的每户人家光顾一次，总是请求给他一顿饭和一杯啤酒。He calls at every house in the street once a month, and always asks for a meal and a glass of beer. Lesson seven. 为时太晚 Too late. 飞机误点了。侦探们在机场等了整整一上午 The plane was late, 
and detectives were waiting at the airport all morning. They were expecting a valuable parcel of diamonds from South Africa. A few hours earlier, someone had told the police that thieves would try to steal the diamonds. When the plane arrived, some of the detectives were waiting inside the main building while others were waiting on the airfield. Two men took the parcel off the plane and carried it into the customs house. While two detectives were keeping guard at the door, two others opened the parcel. To their surprise, the precious parcel was full of stones and sand. Lesson 8 the best and the worst. Joe Sanders has the most beautiful garden in our town. Nearly everybody enters for the nicest garden competition each year. But Joe wins every time. Bill Frith's garden is larger than Joe's. Bill works harder than Joe and grows more flowers and vegetables. But Joe's garden is more interesting. He has made neat paths and has built a wooden bridge over a pool. I like gardens too, but I do not like hard work. Every year, I enter for the garden competition too, and I always win a little prize for the worst garden in the town. Lesson 9 A cold welcome On Wednesday evening, we went to the town hall. It was the last day of the year, and a large crowd of people had gathered under the town hall clock. It would strike twelve in twenty minutes' time. Fifteen minutes passed, and then, at five to twelve, the clock stopped. The big minute hand did not move. We waited and waited, but nothing happened. Suddenly, someone shouted, It's two minutes past twelve. The clock has stopped. I looked at my watch. It was true. The big clock refused to welcome the new year. At that moment, everybody began to laugh and sing. Lesson 10 Not for jazz. We have an old musical instrument. It is called a clavichord. 
It was made in Germany in 1681. 我们的这架古钢琴存放在起居室内。Our clavichord is kept in the living room. 我们家有这件乐器已经很久了。It has belonged to our family for a long time. 是我祖父在很多年以前买的。The instrument was bought by my grandfather many years ago. 可它最近被一个客人弄坏了。Recently, it was damaged by a visitor. She tried to play jazz on it. She struck the keys too hard, and two of the strings were broken. My father was shocked. Now we are not allowed to touch it. 父亲的一个朋友正在修理这件乐器。It is being repaired by a friend of my father's. Lesson eleven. 礼尚往来。One good turn deserves another. 我正在一家饭馆吃饭，托尼斯蒂尔走了进来。I was having dinner at a restaurant when Tony Steele came in. 托尼曾在一家律师事务所工作，而现在正在一家银行上班。Tony worked in a lawyer's office years ago, but he is now working at a bank. 他的薪水很高，但他却总是向朋友们借钱，并且从来不还。He gets a good salary, but he always borrows money from his friends and never pays it back. Tony 看见了我，就走过来和我坐到一张桌子前。Tony saw me and came and sat at the same table. 他从未向我借过钱。He has never borrowed money from me. 当他吃饭时，我提出向他借二十英镑。While he was eating, I asked him to lend me twenty pounds. 令我惊奇的是，他立刻把钱给了我。To my surprise. He gave me the money immediately. 我还从未向你借过钱，托尼说道。所以现在你可以替我付饭钱了。I have never borrowed any money from you, Tony said. So now you can pay for my dinner. Lesson twelve. 再见，一路顺风。Goodbye and good luck. 我们的邻居查尔斯·艾利森船长，明天就要从普茨茅斯起航了。Our neighbor, Captain Charles Allison, will sail from Portsmouth tomorrow. 明天一大早，我们将在码头为他送行。We'll meet him at the harbor early in the morning. 他将乘坐他的套泊赛号小艇。He will be in his small boat topsail. Topsail is a famous little boat. It has sailed across the Atlantic many times. Edison 船长将于八点钟起航，因此我们有充裕的时间。Captain Allison will set out at eight o'clock, so we'll have plenty of time. 我们将参观他的船，然后和他告别。We'll see his boat, and then we'll say goodbye to him. He will be away for two months. We are very proud of him. He will take part in an important race across the Atlantic. Lesson thirteen. 绿林少年 The Greenwood Boys. 绿林少年是一个流行歌曲演唱团。The Greenwood Boys are a group of pop singers. 目前，他们正在全国各地巡回演出。At present, they are visiting all parts of the country. 明天就要到达此地。They will be arriving here tomorrow. 他们将乘火车来。镇上的大部分青年人将到车站迎接他们。They will be coming by train, and most of the young people in the town will be meeting them at the station. 明晚他们将在工人俱乐部演出。Tomorrow evening, they will be singing at the workers' club. 
绿林少年准备在此逗留五天。The Greenwood Boys will be staying for five days. 在此期间，他们将演出五场。During this time, they will give five performances. 同往常一样，警察的日子将不好过。As usual, the police will have a difficult time. 他们将设法维持秩序。They will be trying to keep order. 每逢这种场合，情况都是这样。It is always the same on these occasions. Lesson fourteen. 你会讲英语吗 ？Do you speak English? 去年我有过一次有趣的经历。I had an amusing experience last year. 在离开法国南部的一个小村庄后。After I had left a small village in the south of France, I drove on to the next town. 途中，一个青年人向我招手。On the way, a young man waved to me. 我把车停下，他向我提出要求搭车。I stopped, and he asked me for a lift. 他一上车，我就用法语向他问早上好。他也同样用法语回答我。As soon as he had got into the car, I said good morning to him in French, and he replied in the same language. 除了个别几个单词外，我根本不会法语。Apart from a few words, I do not know any French at all. 旅途中，我们谁也没讲话。Neither of us spoke during the journey. 就要到达那个镇时。那青年突然开了口，慢慢地说道：“你会讲英语吗 ？”I had nearly reached the town when the young man suddenly said, very slowly, "Do you speak English?" 我很快了解到，他自己就是个英国人。As I soon learnt, he was English himself. Lesson fifteen. 加音。Good news. 秘书告诉我说，哈姆斯沃斯先生要见我。The secretary told me that Mr. Harmsworth would see me. 我走进他的办公室，感到非常紧张。I felt very nervous when I went into his office. 我进去的时候，他连头也没抬。He did not look up from his desk when I entered. 待我坐下后，他说生意非常不景气。After I had sat down, he said that business was very bad. 他还告诉我，公司支付不起这么庞大的工资开支。He told me that the firm could not afford to pay such large salaries. 有二十个人已经离去。Twenty people had already left. 我知道这次轮到我了。I knew that my turn had come. 哈姆斯沃斯先生。我无力地说 ，Mr. Harmsworth, I said in a weak voice. 不要打断我的话，他说。Don't interrupt, he said. 然后他微笑了一下，告诉我说，我每年将得到一千英镑的额外收入。Then he smiled, and told me I would receive an extra thousand pounds a year. Lesson sixteen. 彬彬有礼的要求。A polite request. 一旦你把汽车停错了地方，交通警很快就会发现。If you park your car in the wrong place, a traffic policeman will soon find it. 如果他没给你罚款单，就放你走了，算你走运。You will be very lucky if he lets you go without a ticket. 然而，情况并不都是这样。However, this does not always happen. Traffic police are sometimes very polite. 有一次在瑞典度假，我发现我的车上有这样一个字条。During a holiday in Sweden, I found this note on my car. 先生，欢迎您光临我们的城市。Sir, we welcome you to our city. 此处是禁止停车区。This is a no parking area. 如果您对我们街上的标牌稍加注意
您在此会过得很愉快的。You will enjoy your stay here if you pay attention to our street signs. 仅此提醒注意。This note is only a reminder. 如果你收到这样的恳求，你是不会不遵照执行的。If you receive a request like this, you cannot fail to obey it. Lesson seventeen. 青春常驻 Always young. 我的姑姑詹妮弗是位演员 My aunt Jennifer is an actress. 她至少也有三十五岁了 She must be at least thirty-five years old. 尽管如此，她却常在舞台上扮演小姑娘 In spite of this, she often appears on the stage as a young girl. Jennifer will have to take part in a new play soon. This time, she will be a girl of seventeen. This time, she will be a girl of seventeen. When she is in the play, she must wear a pink dress and a pink dress. In the play, she must wear a pink dress and a pink dress. In the play, she must wear a pink dress and a pink dress. In the play, she must wear a pink dress and a pink dress. In the play, she must wear a pink dress and a pink dress. In the play, she must wear a pink dress and a pink dress. 去年在演另一个剧时，她不得不穿短袜和一件鲜艳的橘红色的衣服。Last year in another play, she had to wear short socks and a bright orange-colored dress. 一旦有人问起她有多大年纪，她总是回答。If anyone ever asks her how old she is, she always answers. 亲爱的，长成大人真可怕。Darling, it must be terrible to be grown up. Lesson eighteen. 他经常干这种事 He often does this. 我在一家乡村小酒店吃过午饭后，就找我的提包 After I had had lunch at a village pub, I looked for my bag. 我曾把它放在门边的椅子上，可这会儿不见了 I had left it on a chair beside the door, and now it wasn't there. 当我正在寻找时，酒店老板走了进来。As I was looking for it, the landlord came in. 您吃的好吗？他问。Did you have a good meal? He asked. 很好，谢谢。我回答。但我付不了账，我的提包没有了。Yes, thank you. I answered. But I can't pay the bill. I haven't got my bag. 酒店老板笑了笑，马上走了出去。The landlord smiled and immediately went out. 一会儿功夫，他拿着我的提包回来了，把它还给了我。In a few minutes, he returned with my bag and gave it back to me. 实在抱歉，他说，我的狗把它弄到花园里去了。他常干这种事。I'm very sorry," he said. "My dog had taken it into the garden. He often does this." Lesson nineteen. 票已售完 Sold out. 剧马上要开演了，我说 The play may begin at any moment. I said. 也许已经开演了呢，苏珊回答说 It may have begun already. Susan answered. I hurried to the ticket office. 问，我可以买两张票吗 ？May I have two tickets, please? I asked. 对不起，票已售完。那位姑娘说。I'm sorry, we've sold out. The girl said. 真可惜，苏珊大声说。What a pity! Susan exclaimed. 正在这时。一个男子匆匆奔向售票处。Just then, a man hurried to the ticket office. 我可以退掉这两张票吗？他问。Can I return these two tickets? He asked. 当然可以。那姑娘说。Certainly, the girl said. 我马上又回到售票处。I went back to the ticket office at once. Could I have those two tickets, please? I asked. 
：“当然可以。”那姑娘说：“不过这两张票是下星期三的，您是否还要呢 ？”Certainly, the girl said. But therefore, next Wednesday's performance. Do you still want them? 我还是买下的好。我垂头丧气地说。I might as well have them, I said sadly. Lesson twenty. 独坐孤舟。One man in a boat. 钓鱼是我特别喜爱的一项运动。Fishing is my favorite sport. 我经常一钓数小时，却一无所获。I often fish for hours without catching anything. 但我从不为此烦恼。But this does not worry me. 有些垂钓者就是不走运。Some fishermen are unlucky. 他们往往鱼钓不到，却钓上来些旧靴子和垃圾。Instead of catching fish, they catch old boots and rubbish. 我的运气甚至还不及他们。I am even less lucky. 我什么东西也未钓到过。就连旧靴子也没有。I never catch anything, not even old boots. 我总是在河上待上整整一上午，然后空着袋子回家。After having spent whole mornings on the river, I always go home with an empty bag. 你可别再钓鱼了，我的朋友们说，这是浪费时间。You must give up fishing, my friends say. It's a waste of time. 然而，他们没有认识到重要的一点。But they don't realize one important thing. 我并不是真的对钓鱼有兴趣。I'm not really interested in fishing. 我感兴趣的只是独坐孤舟，无所事事。I am only interested in sitting in a boat and doing nothing at all. Lesson twenty-one. 是不是疯了 ？Mad or not? 飞机正在逐渐把我逼疯。Airplanes are slowly driving me mad. 我住在一个机场附近，过往飞机日夜不绝于耳。I live near an airport, and passing planes can be heard night and day. 机场是许多年前建的，但由于某种原因，当时未能启用。The airport was built years ago, but for some reason it could not be used then. 然而，去年机场开始使用了。Last year, however, it came into use. 有一百多人，肯定是被噪音逼的，已经弃家远去。Over a hundred people must have been driven away from their homes by the noise. 我是少数留下来的人中的一个。I am one of the few people left. 有时我觉得这房子就要被一架飞过的飞机撞倒。Sometimes I think this house will be knocked down by a passing plane. 他们曾向我提供一大笔钱让我搬走，但我决定留在这儿。I have been offered a large sum of money to go away, but I am determined to stay here. 大家都说我肯定是疯了。也许他们说的是对的。Everybody says I must be mad, and they are probably right. Lesson twenty-two. 玻璃信封 A glass envelope. 我的女儿简从未想过会接到荷兰一位同龄姑娘的来信。My daughter Jane never dreamed of receiving a letter from a girl of her own age in Holland. 去年，当我们横渡英吉利海峡时，简把写有她名字和住址的一张纸条装进了一只瓶子。Last year, we were traveling across the Channel, and Jane put a piece of paper with her name and address on it into a bottle. 又将瓶子扔进了大海。She threw the bottle into the sea. 此后，他就再没去想那只瓶子。但十个月以后，他收到了荷兰一位姑娘的来信。She never thought of it again, but ten months later, she received a letter from a girl in Holland. 
。现在这两位姑娘定期通信了。Both girls write to each other regularly now. 然而，他们还是决定利用邮局。However, they have decided to use the post office. 这样会稍微多花点钱，但肯定是快得多了。Letters will cost a little more, but they will certainly travel faster. Lesson twenty-three. 新居 A new house. 昨天我收到了姐姐的一封信 I had a letter from my sister yesterday. 她住在尼日利亚 She lives in Nigeria. 在信中，她说她明年将到英国来 In her letter. She said that she would come to England next year. 如果她来了，她会感到非常惊奇的。If she comes, she will get a surprise. 我们现在住在乡间的一栋漂亮的新住宅里。We are now living in a beautiful new house in the country. 这栋房子在我姐姐离开之前就已动工了。Work on it had begun before my sister left. The house was completed five months ago. 我在信中告诉他，他可以和我们住在一起。In my letter, I told her that she could stay with us. 这栋房子里有许多大房间，还有一个漂亮的花园。The house has many large rooms, and there is a lovely garden. 它是一栋非常现代化的住宅，因此在有些人看来很古怪。It is a very modern house, so it looks strange to some people. 它肯定是这个地区唯一的一栋现代化住宅。It must be the only modern house in the district. Lesson twenty-four. 不幸中之万幸。It could be worse. 我走进饭店经理的办公室，坐了下来。I entered the hotel manager's office and sat down. 我刚刚丢了五十英镑，感到非常烦恼。I had just lost fifty pounds and I felt very upset. 我把钱放在房间里，我说，可现在没有了。I left the money in my room, I said, and it's not there now. 经理深表同情，但却无能为力。The manager was sympathetic, but he could do nothing. 现在大家都在丢钱，他说。Everyone's losing money these days, he said. 他开始抱怨起这个邪恶的世道来，却被一阵敲门声打断了。He started to complain about this wicked world. But was interrupted by a knock at the door. 一个姑娘走了进来，把一个信封放在了他桌上。A girl came in and put an envelope on his desk. 它里面装着五十英镑。It contained fifty pounds. 这是我在这位先生的房门外捡到的。他说。I found this outside this gentleman's room. She said. 是啊，我对那位经理说。这世界上还是有诚实可言的。Well, I said to the manager, there is still some honesty in this world. Lesson twenty-five. 英国人讲的是英语吗 ？Do the English speak English? 我终于到了伦敦。I arrived in London at last. 火车站很大，又黑又暗。The railway station was big, black, and dark. 我不知道去旅店的路该怎么走，于是向一个搬运工打听。I did not know the way to my hotel, so I asked a porter. 我的英语讲的不但非常认真，而且咬字也非常清楚。I not only spoke English very carefully, but very clearly as well. 然而，搬运工却不明白我的话。The porter, however, could not understand me. 我把问话重复了很多遍，他终于听懂了。I repeated my questions several times, and at last he understood. 
他回答了，但他讲的既不慢也不清楚。He answered me, but he spoke neither slowly nor clearly. 我是个外国人，我说。I am a foreigner, I said. 于是他说的慢了，可我还是听不懂。Then he spoke slowly, but I could not understand him. 我的老师从来不那样讲英语。My teacher never spoke English like that. 我和搬运工相视一笑。The porter and I looked at each other and smiled. 接着他说了点什么，这回我听懂了。Then he said something, and I understood it. 您会很快学会英语的，他说。You'll soon learn English, he said. 我感到奇怪。I wonder. 在英国，每个人都说着一种不同的语言。In England, each person speaks a different language. 英国人之间相互听得懂，可我却不懂他们的话。The English understand each other, but I don't understand them. 他们说的是英语吗 ？Do they speak English? Lesson twenty-six. 最佳艺术评论家。The best art critics. 我是个学艺术的学生，画了很多画。I am an art student, and I paint a lot of pictures. 有很多人装成很懂现代艺术的样子。Many people pretend that they understand modern art. 总是告诉你一幅画的意思是什么。They always tell you what a picture is about. 当然，有很多画是什么意思也没有的。Of course, many pictures are not about anything. 它们就是些好看的图案。They are just pretty patterns. 我们喜欢它们，就像我们喜欢漂亮的窗帘布一样。We like them in the same way that we like pretty curtain material. 我觉得小孩子们往往比任何人都更能欣赏现代绘画。I think that young children often appreciate modern pictures better than anyone else. They notice more. My sister has seven years older than me, but she is still able to say my words as well as my words. Her mother is older than me, but she is still able to say my words as well as my words. Her mother is older than me, but she is still able to say my words as well as my words. My sister is only seven, but she always tells me whether my pictures are good or not. Yesterday, she came into my room. 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 Yesterday, she
。有两个孩子醒了，大声叫了起来。In the middle of the night, two boys woke up and began shouting. 原来帐篷里到处都是水。The tent was full of water. 他们全都跳出睡袋，跑到外面。They all leapt out of their sleeping bags and hurried outside. 雨下得很大，他们发现地上已经形成了一条小溪。It was raining heavily, and they found that a stream had formed in the field. 那小溪弯弯曲曲穿过田野，然后正好从他们的帐篷底下流过去。The stream wound its way across the field and then flowed right under their tent. Lesson twenty-eight. 禁止停车 No parking. 贾斯珀·怀特是少有的相信古代神话的人之一 Jasper White is one of those rare people who believes in ancient myths. 他刚在城里买下一所新房子，但自从搬进去后。就和汽车及车主们发生了摩擦。He has just bought a new house in the city, but ever since he moved in, he has had trouble with cars and their owners. 当他晚上回到家时，总是发现有人把车停在他家大门外。When he returns home at night, he always finds that someone has parked a car outside his gate. 为此。他甚至一次也没能把自己的车开进车库。Because of this, he has not been able to get his own car into his garage even once. 贾斯珀曾把几块禁止停车的牌子挂在大门外边，但没有任何效果。Jasper has put up no parking signs outside his gate, but these have not had any effect. 现在他把一个丑陋的石雕头像放在了大门上边。Now he has put an ugly stone head over the gate. 这是我见过的最丑陋的头像之一。It is one of the ugliest faces I have ever seen. 我问他那是什么，他告诉我那是蛇发女怪美杜莎。I asked him what it was, and he told me that it was Medusa. The Gorgon. Jasper 希望他把汽车和车主们都变成石头 Jasper hopes that she will turn cars and their owners to stone. 但是到目前为止，还没有一个人变成石头呢 But none of them has been turned to stone yet. Lesson twenty nine. 出租汽车 Taxi. 本·福希特机长买了一辆不同寻常的出租汽车，并开始了一项新的业务。Captain Ben Fawcett has bought an unusual taxi and has begun a new service. 这辆出租汽车是一架小型瑞士飞机，叫皮勒特斯波特号。The taxi is a small Swiss airplane called a Pilatus Porter. This wonderful plane can carry seven passengers. 然而，最令人惊奇的是，它能够在任何地方降落：雪地上、水面上，甚至刚耕过的田里。The most surprising thing about it, however, is that it can land anywhere: on snow, water, or even on a plowed field. 福希特机长的第一名乘客是位医生。他从伯明翰飞往威尔士山区一个偏僻的村庄。Captain Fawcett's first passenger was a doctor who flew from Birmingham to a lonely village in the Welsh mountains. 从那时开始，福希特机长已经载送乘客到过许多不寻常的地方。Since then. Captain Fawcett has flown passengers to many unusual places. 一次，他把飞机降落在了一栋公寓楼的屋顶上；还有一次，降落在了一个废弃的停车场上。Once he landed on the roof of a block of flats, and on another occasion, he landed in a deserted car park. 福希特机长
刚刚拒绝了一位商人的奇怪要求。Captain Fawcett has just refused a strange request from a businessman. 这个人想要飞往大西洋上的一个孤岛——罗卡尔岛。福希特机长之所以不送他去，是因为那段飞行太危险了。The man wanted to fly to Rockall, a lonely island in the Atlantic Ocean. But Captain Fawcett did not take him because the trip was too dangerous. Lesson thirty. 足球还是水球 Football or polo. 威尔河是横穿过我家附近公园的一条小河 The Whale is a small river that cuts across the park near my home. 我喜欢在天气晴朗的下午到河边坐坐 I like sitting by the whale on fine afternoons. 上星期日天气很暖和，于是我和往常一样又去河边坐着。It was warm last Sunday, so I went and sat on the river bank as usual. 河岸上有些孩子正在玩耍，河面上有些人正在划船。Some children were playing games on the bank, and there were some people rowing on the river. 突然，一个孩子狠狠地踢了一脚球，球便向着一只划过来的小船飞去。Suddenly, one of the children kicked a ball very hard, and it went towards a passing boat. 岸上的一些人对着小船上的人高喊，但他没有听见。Some people on the bank called out to the man in the boat, but he did not hear them. 球重重地打在他身上。使他差点落入水中。The ball struck him so hard that he nearly fell into the water. 我转过头去看那些孩子，但一个也不见，全都跑了。I turned to look at the children, but there weren't any in sight. They had all run away. 当那个人明白了发生的事情时，笑了起来。The man laughed when he realized what had happened. 他大声地叫着那些孩子，把球扔回到岸上。He called out to the children and threw the ball back to the bank. Lesson thirty-one. 成功者的故事 Success story. 昨天下午，弗兰克·霍金斯向我讲述了他年轻时的经历。Yesterday afternoon. Frank Hawkins was telling me about his experiences as a young man. 在退休前，弗兰克是一家非常大的商业公司的经理，但他小时候却在一家小铺里做工。Before he retired, Frank was the head of a very large business company, but as a boy, he used to work in a small shop. 他那时的工作是修理自行车，并且通常是一天工作十四个小时。It was his job to repair bicycles, and at that time he used to work fourteen hours a day. 他靠多年积蓄，于一九五八年买下了自己的一个小铺子。He saved money for years, and in 1958 he bought a small workshop of his own. 二十多岁的时候，弗兰克曾生产飞机零配件。In his twenties, Frank used to make spare parts for airplanes. 那时他有两个帮手。At that time, he had two helpers. 几年之后，小铺子已经发展成了一个雇有七百二十八人的大工厂。In a few years, the small workshop had become a large factory. Which employed seven hundred and twenty-eight people. Frank 回想着他早年的艰难经历和走过的漫长的成功之路，微笑了。Frank smiled when he remembered his hard early years and the long road to success. 他正笑着的时候，门开了，他的妻子走了进来。He was still smiling when the door opened and his wife came in. She wanted him to repair their grandson's bicycle. Lesson thirty-two. 购物变得很方便 Shopping made easy. 人们不再像以前那样诚实了
People are not so honest as they once were. 偷窃的诱惑力比以往任何时候都更强烈，特别是在大的商店里。The temptation to steal is greater than ever before, especially in large shops. 一名侦探最近注意上了一位穿着讲究的妇女，她总是在星期一上午进入一家大商场。A detective recently watched a well-dressed woman who always went into a large store on Monday mornings. 有一个星期一，当这位妇女走进这家商场时，里面的人比往常少，因此侦探比较容易监视她。One Monday, there were fewer people in the shop than usual when the woman came in, so it was easier for the detective to watch her. The woman first bought a few small articles. 过了一会儿，她又选了商场里最昂贵的一件衣服，把它递给了售货员。那售货员以最快的速度为她包好了衣服。After a little time, she chose one of the most expensive dresses in the shop and handed it to an assistant who wrapped it up for her. As quickly as possible. 然后那妇女拿过包就走出了商场，根本没有付钱。Then the woman simply took the parcel and walked out of the shop without paying. 她被逮捕后，侦探发现原来那售货员是她的女儿。When she was arrested, the detective found out that the shop assistant was her daughter. 那姑娘每星期送她母亲一件免费的衣服。The girl gave her mother a free dress once a week. Lesson thirty-three. 冲出黑暗。Out of the darkness. 几乎过了一个星期，那姑娘才能讲述自己的遭遇。Nearly a week passed before the girl was able to explain what had happened to her. 一天下午。他乘小船从海岸出发，遇上了风暴。One afternoon, she set out from the coast in a small boat and was caught in a storm. 天将黑时，小船撞在了一块礁石上，姑娘跳进了海里。Towards evening, the boat struck a rock and the girl jumped into the sea. 她在海里游了整整一夜才游到岸边。Then she swam to the shore after spending the whole night in the water. 在那段时间里，她游了八英里。During that time, she covered a distance of eight miles. 第二天凌晨，她看到前方有灯光。Early next morning, she saw a light ahead. 知道自己已经接近岸边了，因为那灯光是在高高的峭壁上。She knew she was near the shore because the light was high up on the cliffs. 到达岸边后，姑娘朝着她看到的灯光方向挣扎着往峭壁上爬去。On arriving at the shore, the girl struggled up the cliff towards the light she had seen. 她所记得的就是这些。That was all she remembered. 第二天，她醒来时，发现自己躺在医院里。When she woke up a day later, she found herself in hospital. Lesson thirty-four. 破案神速。Quick work. 当鲁滨逊焦虑了整整一个星期。Dan Robinson has been worried all week. 上星期二，他收到当地警察局的一封信。Last Tuesday, he received a letter from the local police. 在信中，他被要求到警察局去一趟。In the letter, he was asked to call at the station. 但奇怪，警察为什么找他？但昨天还是去了，结果他不再担心了。Dan wondered why he was wanted by the police, but he went to the station yesterday. And now he is not worried anymore. 在警察局里，一位面带笑容的警察告诉他，他的自行车找到了。At the station, he was told by a smiling policeman 
that his bicycle had been found. 那位警察对他说，那辆自行车是五天前在四百英里外的一个小村里发现的。Five days ago, the policeman told him, the bicycle was picked up in a small village four hundred miles away. 现在正用火车给他运回家来。It is now being sent to his home by train. Dan 听到这个消息后惊奇万分 Dan was most surprised when he heard the news. Dan 又感到非常好笑，因为他从未指望那辆自行车还能找到 He was amused too, because he never expected the bicycle to be found. 这是二十年前，丹还是一个十五岁的孩子时被人偷走的。It was stolen twenty years ago when Dan was a boy of fifteen. Lesson thirty-five. 捉贼 Stop, thief. 罗伊特雷顿原是开出租汽车的。Roy Trenton used to drive a taxi. 然而，就在前不久。他开上了公共汽车，也并不为此而感到后悔。A short while ago, however, he became a bus driver, and he has not regretted it. 他发觉自己的新工作令人兴奋得多。He is finding his new work far more exciting. 最近，当他正开车在凯特福德街上行驶时。看到有两个小偷从一家商店里冲出来，奔向等在那里的一辆汽车。When he was driving along Catford Street recently, he saw two thieves rush out of a shop and run towards a waiting car. 其中一个提着一只装满钞票的提包。One of them was carrying a bag full of money. 罗伊行动迅速。开车直冲窃贼而去。Roy acted quickly and drove the bus straight at the thieves. 拿钱的那个小偷吓得把提包都扔了。The one with the money got such a fright that he dropped the bag. 当那两个小偷企图乘车逃跑时，罗伊驾驶他的公共汽车撞在了那辆车的后尾上。As the thieves were trying to get away in their car. Roy drove his bus into the back of it. 当那辆被撞坏的车开走后，罗伊停下车，给警察打了电话。While the battered car was moving away, Roy stopped his bus and telephoned the police. 小偷的车损坏严重，很容易辨认。The thief's car was badly damaged and easy to recognize. 没过多久。警察就截住了那辆车，两个小偷都被抓住了。Shortly afterwards, the police stopped the car, and both men were arrested. Lesson thirty-six. 横渡海峡 Across the Channel. 黛比哈特准备明天横渡英吉利海峡。Debbie Hart is going to swim across the English Channel tomorrow. 她打算早上五点钟从法国海岸出发。She is going to set out from the French coast at five o'clock in the morning. 黛比只有十一岁，她希望创一项新的世界纪录。Debbie is only eleven years old, and she hopes to set up a new world record. 她是一个游泳能手，很多人认为她一定能成功。She is a strong swimmer, and many people feel that she is sure to succeed. Debbie's father will send a boat to her to take her across the ocean. Debbie's father will set out with her in a small boat. Hart has trained his daughter for years. Mr. 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 Hart has trained Tomorrow, he will be watching her anxiously as she swims the long distance to England. Debbie 计划每两小时休息一下 Debbie intends to take short rests every two hours. 她将喝些饮料，但不吃固体食物 
She will have something to drink, but she will not eat any solid food. 黛比的大部分同学将在英国海岸等候她。Most of Debbie's school friends will be waiting for her on the English coast. 他们当中还会有黛比的母亲，她本人还是个姑娘时，也曾横渡过英吉利海峡。Among them will be Debbie's mother, who swam the Channel herself when she was a girl. Lesson thirty-seven. 奥林匹克运动会 The Olympic Games. 四年以后，奥林匹克运动会将在我们国家举行。The Olympic Games will be held in our country in four years' time. 由于将有大批的人到我们国家来，所以政府准备建造一些新的酒店、一个大型体育场和一个新的奥运会标准游泳池。As a great many people will be visiting the country. The government will be building new hotels, an immense stadium, and a new Olympic standard swimming pool. They will also be building new roads and a special railway line. The Olympic Games will be held in the capital city. The whole region will be called the Olympic City. The games will be held just outside the capital. And the whole area will be called Olympic City. 工人们将在今年年底前把新路铺好 Workers will have completed the new roads by the end of this year. 到明年年底，他们将把新体育场建成 By the end of next year, they will have finished work on the new stadium. 这些巨大的现代化建筑是由库尔特·冈特设计的 The fantastic modern buildings have been designed by Kurt Gunter. 大家都将急切地注视着新建筑的建成 Everybody will be watching anxiously as the new buildings go up. 我们都非常激动，盼望着奥运会的到来，因为在这个国家里还从未举办过奥运会 We are all very excited and are looking forward to the Olympic Games. Because they have never been held before in this country. Lesson thirty-eight. 唯独没有考虑到天气 Everything except the weather. 我的老朋友哈里森在回到英国以前，曾多年居住在地中海地区 My old friend Harrison had lived in the Mediterranean for many years before he returned to England. 过去，他常幻想退休后到英国，并计划在乡间安顿下来。He had often dreamed of retiring in England, and had planned to settle down in the country. 他刚一回到英国，便买下了一幢房子，住了进去。He had no sooner returned than he bought a house and went to live there. 但紧接着，他就开始抱怨那里的天气了。因为即使那时仍为夏季，但雨总是下个不停，而且常常冷得厉害。Almost immediately, he began to complain about the weather, for even though it was still summer, it rained continually and it was often bitterly cold. 在阳光下生活了那么多年的哈里森对此感到惊奇。After so many years of sunshine. Harrison got a shock. His action was as if he had never lived in England before. He acted as if he had never lived in England before. He acted as if he had never lived in England before. He acted as if he had never lived in England before. He acted as if he had never lived in England before. He acted as if he had never lived in England before. He acted as if he had never lived in England before. He acted as if he had never lived in England before. He acted as if he had never lived in England before. He acted as if he had never lived in England before. He acted as if he had never lived in England before. He acted as if he had never lived in England before. He acted as if he had never lived in England before. He acted as if he had never lived in England before. He acted as if he had never lived in England before. He acted as if he had never lived in England before. He acted as if he had never lived in England before. He acted as if he had never lived in England before. He acted as if he had never lived in England before. He acted as if he had never lived in England before. He acted as if he had never lived in England before. He acted as if he had never lived in England before. He acted as if he had never lived in England The dream he had had for so many years ended there. Harrison 把每件事情都考虑到了，唯独没想到天气。Harrison had thought of everything except the weather. Lesson thirty-nine. 我是否痊愈 ？Am I all right? 当约翰·吉尔伯特住院的时候。
。他问医生他的手术是否成功，但医生拒绝告诉他。While John Gilbert was in hospital, he asked his doctor to tell him whether his operation had been successful, but the doctor refused to do so. 第二天。这位病人要了一部床头电话。The following day, the patient asked for a bedside telephone. 当房里只剩他一个人时，他打通了医院的交换台，要求与米灵顿医生讲话。When he was alone, he telephoned the hospital exchange and asked for Doctor Millington. 当这位医生接过电话时。杰尔伯特先生说，他想询问一个病人的情况，是一名名叫约翰·杰尔伯特的先生。When the doctor answered the phone, Mr. Gilbert said he was inquiring about a certain patient, a Mr. John Gilbert. 他问杰尔伯特先生的手术是否成功，医生告诉他手术很成功。He asked if Mr. Gilbert's operation had been successful, and the doctor told him that it had been. 然后他又问吉尔伯特先生什么时候可以回家。医生说他在医院还必须再住上两个星期。He then asked when Mr. Gilbert would be allowed to go home, and the doctor told him that he would have to stay in hospital for another two weeks. 之后，米灵顿医生问打电话的人是否是病人的亲属。Then Doctor Millington asked the caller if he was a relative of the patient. 不是，病人回答说，我就是约翰吉尔伯特先生。No, the patient answered, "I am Mr. John Gilbert." Lesson forty. 进餐与交谈。Food and talk. 在上星期的一次宴会上，女主人安排我坐在兰博尔德夫人的身旁。Last week at a dinner party, the hostess asked me to sit next to Mrs. Rumbold. 兰博尔德夫人是一位身材高大、表情严肃的女人，穿一件紧身的黑衣服。Mrs. Rumbold was a large, unsmiling lady in a tight black dress. 当我在他身旁坐下来的时候，他甚至连头都没有抬一下。She did not even look up when I took my seat beside her. 他的眼睛盯着自己的盘子，不一会儿就忙着吃起来了。Her eyes were fixed on her plate, and in a short time, she was busy eating. 我试图找个话题和他聊聊。I tried to make conversation. 一出新剧要来环球剧场上演了，我说：“您去看吗 ？”A new play is coming to the Globe soon, I said. Will you be seeing it? 不，他回答。No, she answered. 您今年去国外度假吗？我又问。Will you be spending your holidays abroad this year? I asked. 不，他回答。No. She answered, "You 就待在英国吗？"我问。Will you be staying in England? I asked. 不，他回答。No, she answered. 失望之中，我问他饭菜是否吃得满意。In despair, I asked her whether she was enjoying her dinner. 年轻人，他回答说，如果你多吃点，少说点，我们两个都会吃得好的。Young man. She answered, "If you ate more and talked less, we would both enjoy our dinner." Lesson forty-one. 你把那个叫帽子吗 ？Do you call that a hat? 你把那个叫帽子吗？我对妻子说。Do you call that a hat? I said to my wife. 你说话没必要这样不客气。我的妻子边回答边照着镜子。You needn't be so rude about it," my wife answered as she looked at herself in the mirror. 我坐在一个新式的满是网眼的椅子上，等待着。
I sat down on one of those modern chairs with holes in it and waited. 我们在这家帽店已经待了半个小时了，而我的妻子仍在镜子面前。We had been in the hat shop for half an hour, and my wife was still in front of the mirror. 我们不应该买我们不需要的东西。我突然发表意见说。We mustn't buy things we don't need," I remarked suddenly. 但马上又后悔说了这话。I regretted saying it almost at once. 你没必要这么说，我妻子回答说。You needn't have said that," my wife answered. 我也不必提醒你，昨天买的那条糟糕透了的领带。I needn't remind you of that terrible tie you bought yesterday. 我觉得它好看。我说。I find it beautiful. I said. 男人有多少领带也不会嫌多。A man can never have too many ties. 女人有多少帽子也不嫌多。他回答。And a woman can't have too many hats. She answered. 十分钟以后。我们一道走出了商店。Ten minutes later, we walked out of the shop together. 我妻子戴着一顶像灯塔一样的帽子。My wife was wearing a hat that looked like a lighthouse. Lesson forty-two. 并非很懂音乐。Not very musical. 当我们穿过旧德里的市场时，走了很长一段路。我们在一个广场上停下来休息。As we had had a long walk through one of the markets of Old Delhi, we stopped at a square to have a rest. 过了一会儿，我们注意到广场的那一边有一个戴着两个大筐的耍蛇人，于是就走过去看看。After a time, we noticed a snake charmer with two large baskets at the other side of the square. So we went to have a look at him. He 一看见我们，就拿起了一个长长的、上面镶有硬币的管乐器，并掀开了一个筐的盖子。As soon as he saw us, he picked up a long pipe which was covered with coins and opened one of the baskets. 当他开始吹奏一支曲子时，我们才第一次看到那条蛇。When he began to play a tune. We had our first glimpse of the snake. He from the pipe out of the pipe, swaying the pipe with the wind and swaying. It rose out of the basket and began to follow the movements of the pipe. When the snake charmer suddenly played a popular Chinese folk music and modern music, we were very excited. We were very much surprised. We were very much surprised when the snake charmer suddenly began to play jazz and modern pop songs. 然而那蛇却还是缓慢地舞动着。The snake, however, continued to dance slowly. 显然，它分辨不出印度音乐和爵士乐。It obviously could not tell the difference between Indian music and jazz. Lesson forty-three. 飞越南极 Over the South Pole. 美国探险家奥尔伊伯德在飞越北极三年之后，于一九二九年第一次飞越了南极 In nineteen twenty-nine, three years after his flight over the North Pole, the American explorer R. E. Bird. Successfully flew over the South Pole for the first time. 虽然开始时，伯德和他的助手们拍下了飞机下面连绵群山的大量照片，但他们很快就陷入了困境。Though at first, Bird and his men were able to take a great many photographs of the mountains that lay below, they soon ran into serious trouble. 在有个地方。飞机似乎肯定要坠毁了。At one point, it seemed certain that their plane would crash. 只有在飞至一万英尺的高度时，它才能飞越这些山头。It could only get over the mountains if it rose to ten thousand feet. 伯德马上命令他的助手们。
把两个沉重的食物袋扔掉。Bird at once ordered his men to throw out two heavy food sacks. 于是飞机可以上升了。它在离山头四百英尺的高度飞越了过去。The plane was then able to rise, and it cleared the mountains by four hundred feet. 伯德这时知道他能够顺利飞抵三百英里以外的南极了，因为前面再没有山了。Bird now knew that he would be able to reach the South Pole, which was three hundred miles away, for there were no more mountains in sight. 飞机可以毫无困难地飞过这片茫茫无际的白色原野。The aircraft was able to fly over the endless white plains without difficulty. Lesson forty-four. 穿过森林 Through the forest. 安斯特林夫人在穿过森林追赶两个男人时，她并没有考虑到所冒的风险。Mrs. Ann Sterling did not think of the risk she was taking when she ran through a forest after two men. 当她和孩子们正在森林边上野餐的时候，这两个人冲到她跟前，企图抢走她的手提包。They had rushed up to her while she was having a picnic at the edge of a forest with her children, and tried to steal her handbag. 在争抢中，手提包的带断了，包落入这两个人手里，他们拔腿跑进了树林。In the struggle, the strap broke, and with the bag in their possession, both men started running through the trees. 斯特林夫人非常气愤，向着他们追了过去。Mrs. Sterling got so angry that she ran after them. 只追了一会儿，便上气不接下气了，但她还是继续追赶。She was soon out of breath, but she continued to run. 当她赶上他们时，发现他们已经坐了下来，正翻着包里的东西。于是她直冲过去。When she caught up with them, she saw that they had sat down and were going through the contents of the bag, so she ran straight at them. 这两个人吓了一跳，扔下提包逃跑了。The men got such a fright that they dropped the bag and ran away. 这提包袋需要修理，斯特林夫人事后说道。不过他们什么也没偷走。The strap needs mending," said Mrs. Sterling later. But they did not steal anything. Lesson forty-five. 问心无愧 A clear conscience. 整个村子很快知道有一大笔钱丢失了 The whole village soon learnt that a large sum of money had been lost. 当地的屠户萨姆本顿。在把存款送往邮局的途中，把钱包丢了。Sam Benton, the local butcher, had lost his wallet while taking his savings to the post office. Sam 确信那钱包一定是被某个村民捡到了，可是却不见有人来送还给他。Sam was sure that the wallet must have been found by one of the villagers. But it was not returned to him. Three months passed. Later, in the morning, Sam found his wallet in his own door. Three months passed, and then one morning, Three months passed, and then one morning, Sam found his wallet outside his front door. The wallet was wrapped in paper. It contained the amount of money that he had lost. It was also wrapped in a note on the back. It was written, "A small thing." Yes. But it was only a small thing. It had been wrapped up in newspaper, and it contained half the money he had lost, together with a note which said, "A thief, yes, but only fifty percent a thief." 又过了两个月，又有一些钱送还给了萨姆，又附了一张字条，这回只是百分之二十五的小偷了。Two months later. Some more money was sent to Sam with another note. Only twenty-five percent a thief now. 很快
。萨姆全部的钱都用同样的方式还了回来。In time, all Sam's money was paid back in this way. 最后的那张字条上写道：“我现在是一个百分之一百诚实的人了。” The last note said, "I am one hundred percent honest now." Lesson forty-six. 既昂贵又受罪。Expensive and uncomfortable. 当一架来自伦敦的飞机抵达悉尼机场时，工人们开始卸下装有服装的一批木箱。When a plane from London arrived at Sydney Airport, workers began to unload a number of wooden boxes which contained clothing. 其中有只箱子特别重，可谁也弄不清是怎么回事。No one could account for the fact that one of the boxes was extremely heavy. 突然，一个工人想到打开箱子看看。It suddenly occurred to one of the workers to open up the box. 看到的情景使他吃惊。He was astonished at what he found. 箱内有一个人正躺在一堆毛织品上。A man was lying in the box on top of a pile of woolen goods. 他由于被人发现而感到非常吃惊，甚至都没有企图逃跑。He was so surprised at being discovered that he did not even try to run away. 此人被逮捕后，承认他是在飞机离开伦敦前躲进箱里的。After he was arrested. The man admitted hiding in the box before the plane left London. He 经历了一次漫长而又难受的旅程，因为他在那木箱里闷了十八多个小时。He had had a long and uncomfortable trip, for he had been confined to the wooden box for over eighteen hours. 此人被责令交付旅费三千五百英镑。The man was ordered to pay three thousand five hundred pounds for the cost of the trip. 而正常票价是两千英镑。The normal price of a ticket is two thousand pounds. Lesson forty-seven. 嗜酒的鬼魂。A thirsty ghost. 因汤普森先生最近才买的一个小酒店，现在又要卖出去。A public house, which was recently bought by Mr. Ian Thompson, is up for sale. Tom Thompson 先生之所以想卖它，是因为那里常闹鬼。Mr. Thompson is going to sell it because it is haunted. 他告诉我，有天夜里他怎么也睡不着，因为他听到酒吧里传来一阵奇怪的响声。He told me that he could not go to sleep one night. Because he heard a strange noise coming from the bar. 第二天早上，他发现酒吧间的门被椅子堵上了，家具也被挪动过。The next morning, he found that the doors had been blocked by chairs and the furniture had been moved. 虽然汤普森临睡觉时把灯关了，但早晨灯却都亮着。Though Mr. Thompson had turned the lights off before he went to bed, they were on in the morning. 他还说他发现了五只空的威士忌酒瓶子，肯定是鬼魂昨天晚上喝的。He also said that he had found five empty whiskey bottles, which the ghost must have drunk the night before. 当我暗示说一定是村里有些人来喝不花钱的酒时，汤普森先生摇了摇头。When I suggested that some villagers must have come in for a free drink, Mr. Thompson shook his head. 村里的人已经告诉他，即使他把小酒店白送人，他们也不要。The villagers have told him that they will not accept the pub. Even if he gives it away. Lesson forty-eight. 你想对我说什么吗 ？Did you want to tell me something? 牙科医生们总是在你无法做出回答的时候向你提出问题。Dentists 
always ask questions when it is impossible for you to answer. 我的牙科医生刚刚给我拔掉了一颗牙，叫我休息一会儿。My dentist had just pulled out one of my teeth and had told me to rest for a while. 我想说点什么，但我的嘴里塞满了药棉。I tried to say something, but my mouth was full of cotton wool. 他知道我收集火柴盒，于是问我收藏的火柴盒是否在增加。He knew I collected matchboxes and asked me whether my collection was growing. 接着他又问我的兄弟近来如何，问我是否喜欢伦敦的新工作。He then asked me how my brother was and whether I liked my new job in London. 作为对这些问题的回答，我不是点头，就是发出奇怪的声音。In answer to these questions, I either nodded or made strange noises. 与此同时，我的舌头正忙着寻找刚拔掉的那颗牙的伤口。Meanwhile, my tongue was busy searching out the hole where the tooth had been. 我突然非常着急起来，但却什么也说不出来。I suddenly felt very worried, but could not say anything. 当那位牙医最后将药棉从我嘴中取出时，我总算能够告诉他，他拔错了牙。When the dentist at last removed the cotton wool from my mouth, I was able to tell him that he had pulled out the wrong tooth. Lesson forty-nine. 美梦告终。The end of a dream. 德黑兰的一个年轻人由于对睡地板感到厌倦，于是积蓄多年买了一张真正的床。Tired of sleeping on the floor, a young man in Tehran saved up for years to buy a real bed. 他平生第一次自豪地拥有了一张既有弹簧又带床垫的床。For the first time in his life. He became the proud owner of a bed which had springs and a mattress. 由于天气很热，他便把床搬到了他的屋顶上。Because the weather was very hot, he carried the bed onto the roof of his house. 头两天晚上，他睡得非常好，但第三天晚上起了风暴。He slept very well for the first two nights. But on the third night, a storm blew up. 一阵大风把床从屋顶上刮了下来，把它摔碎在下面的院子里。A gust of wind swept the bed off the roof and sent it crashing into the courtyard below. 那年轻人直到床撞到了地上才醒了过来。The young man did not wake up until the bed had struck the ground. 尽管床摔成了碎片，但年轻人却奇迹般的没有受伤。Although the bed was smashed to pieces, the man was miraculously unhurt. 他醒来时仍然躺在床垫上。When he woke up, he was still on the mattress. 年轻人看了一眼周围的碎木片和碎金属片，伤心的捡起了床垫，把它拿进了屋。Glancing at the bits of wood and metal that lay around him, the man sadly picked up the mattress and carried it into his house. He put the mattress on the floor and fell asleep. He fell asleep quickly. After he had put it on the floor, he promptly went to sleep again. Lesson fifty. Taken for a ride. I like to take a car on a ride. I love traveling in the country, but I don't like losing my way. 最近我做了一次短途旅行，但这次旅行所花费的时间比我预计的要长。I went on an excursion recently, but my trip took me longer than I expected. 我要去伍德福德草地，我一上车就对售票员说。但我不知道他在哪儿。I'm going to Woodford Green, I said to the conductor as I got on the bus. 
But I don't know where it is. 我来告诉您在哪儿下车。售票员回答说 ，I'll tell you where to get off. Answered the conductor. 我坐在汽车的前部，以便饱览乡村风光。I sat in the front of the bus to get a good view of the countryside. 过了一些时候，车停了。After some time, the bus stopped. 我环视了一下身旁。惊奇地发现，车里就只剩我一个乘客了。Looking round, I realized with a shock that I was the only passenger left on the bus. 您得在这儿下车，售票员说，我们的车就到此为止了。You'll have to get off here, the conductor said. This is as far as we go. 这里是伍德福德草地吗？我问道。Is this Woodford Green? I asked. 哎呀，售票员突然说，我忘了让您下车了。Oh dear," said the conductor suddenly. "I forgot to put you off." 没关系，我说，我就在这儿下吧。It doesn't matter," I said. "I'll get off here." 我们现在要返回去，售票员说。We're going back now," said the conductor. 好吧，既然如此，我还是留在车上吧。我回答说。Well, in that case, I prefer to stay on the bus. I answered. Lesson fifty-one. 对美德的奖赏。Reward for virtue. 我的朋友西欧一直很胖，但近来情况变得越发糟糕，以致他决定节食。My friend Hugh. Has always been fat, but things got so bad recently that he decided to go on a diet. 他是一星期前开始节食的。He began his diet a week ago. 首先，他开立了一张长长的单子，上面列了所有禁吃的食物。First of all, he wrote out a long list of all the foods which were forbidden. 这张单子上的大多数食物都是西欧喜欢吃的：黄油、土豆、米饭、啤酒、牛奶、巧克力和糖果。The list included most of the things Hugh loves: butter, potatoes, rice, beer, milk, chocolate, and sweets. 昨天我去看望了他。Yesterday I paid him a visit. 我按响了门铃。当看到西欧人和往常一样胖时，我并不感到惊奇。I rang the bell and was not surprised to see that Hugh was still as fat as ever. 他把我领进屋，慌忙把一个大包藏到了桌子下面。He led me into his room and hurriedly hid a large parcel under his desk. 显然，他感到很尴尬。It was obvious that he was very embarrassed. 当我问他正干什么时，他内疚地笑了，然后把那个大包拿到了桌上。When I asked him what he was doing, he smiled guiltily and then put the parcel on the desk. 他解释说，他的饮食控制得太严格了，以致不得不偶尔奖赏自己一下。He explained that his diet was so strict that he had to reward himself occasionally. Then he showed me the contents of the parcel. 里面装了五大块巧克力和三袋糖果。It contained five large bars of chocolate and three bags of sweets. Lesson fifty-two. 漂亮的地毯。A pretty carpet. 我们刚刚搬进一所新房子。我辛辛苦苦地干了整整一个上午。We have just moved into a new house, and I have been working hard all morning. 我试图把我的新房间收拾整齐。I have been trying to get my new room in order. 但这并不容易，因为我有一千多本书。This has not been easy because I own over a thousand books. 更糟糕的是，房间还非常小，所以我暂时把书放在了地板上。To make matters worse, the room is rather small. 
So I have temporarily put my books on the floor. 这会儿，书把地板的每一点空隙都占据了。我实际上是踩着这些书进出房间的。At the moment, they cover every inch of floor space, and I actually have to walk on them to get in or out of the room. 几分钟前，我妹妹帮我把一个旧书橱抬上了楼。A short while ago, my sister helped me to carry one of my old bookcases up the stairs. 她走进我的房间，当她看到地板上的那些书时，大吃一惊。She went into my room and got a big surprise when she saw all those books on the floor. 这是我见过的最漂亮的地毯，她说。This is the prettiest carpet I have ever seen," she said. 她盯着地毯看了一会儿，又说：“你根本用不着书橱。” She gazed at it for some time, then added, "You don't need bookcases at all." 空闲时，你可以坐在这儿读地毯。You can sit here in your spare time and read the carpet. Lesson fifty-three. Hot snake. 消防队员们终于扑灭了加利福尼亚的一场森林大火。At last, firemen have put out a big forest fire in California. 从那时起，他们一直试图找出起火的原因。Since then, they have been trying to find out how the fire began. 森林火灾时常由破碎的玻璃。Forest fires are often caused by broken glass or by cigarette ends, which people carelessly throw away. 昨天，消防队员仔细查看了地面，但未能发现碎玻璃。Yesterday, the firemen examined the ground carefully, but were not able to find any broken glass. They were also quite sure that a cigarette end did not start the fire. 然而，今天上午，一个消防队员偶然发现了起火的原因。This morning, however, a fireman accidentally discovered the cause. 他发现了缠绕在一万六千伏高压电线上的一条死蛇。He noticed the remains of a snake, which was wound round the electric wires of a sixteen thousand volt power line. 就这样，他解开了起火之谜。In this way, he was able to solve the mystery. 解释很简单，却异乎寻常。The explanation was simple but very unusual. 一只鸟把蛇从地上抓起来。然后把它扔到了电线上。A bird had snatched up the snake from the ground and then dropped it onto the wires. 于是蛇就缠住了几根电线。The snake then wound itself round the wires. 当它这样做时，把火花送到了地面。这些火花立刻引起了一场大火。When it did so. It sent sparks down to the ground, and these immediately started a fire. Lesson fifty-four. 黏糊的手指 Sticky fingers. 早饭后，我送孩子们上学，然后就去了商店 After breakfast, I sent the children to school, and then I went to the shops. 我回到家时，时间还早。It was still early when I returned home. 孩子们在上学，我丈夫在上班，家里清静的很。The children were at school. My husband was at work, and the house was quiet. 于是，我决定做些肉馅饼。So I decided to make some meat pies. 不一会儿，我就忙着调拌起了黄油和面粉。很快，我的手上就沾满了黏黏的面糊。In a short time, I was busy mixing butter and flour, and my hands were soon covered with sticky pastry. 恰恰在此时，电话铃响了。At exactly that moment, 
the telephone rang. Nothing could have been more annoying. I picked up the receiver between two sticky fingers and was dismayed when I recognized the voice of Helen Bates. 我用了十分钟的时间才说服她过会儿再来电话。It took me ten minutes to persuade her to ring back later. 我终于挂上了话筒。At last, I hung up the receiver. 真是糟糕透了。What a mess! 我的手指上、电话机上以及门的把手上都沾上了面糊。There was pastry on my fingers. On the telephone and on the doorknobs. 我刚回到厨房，门铃又响了起来，响声震耳欲聋。I had no sooner got back to the kitchen than the doorbell rang loud enough to wake the dead. 这次是邮递员，他要我签收一封挂号信。This time it was the postman, and he wanted me to sign for a registered letter. Lesson fifty-five. 并非金矿 Not a gold mine. 最近找到失踪宝藏的梦想差一点变成现实 Dreams of finding lost treasure almost came true recently. 一种叫探宝器的新机器已经发明出来，并被人们用来探测地下埋藏的金子 A new machine called the Revealer. Has been invented, and it has been used to detect gold which has been buried in the ground. 在靠近海边的一个据说过去海盗藏在里面藏金子的岩洞里，这种机器被派上了用场。The machine was used in a cave near the seashore where, it is said, pirates used to hide gold. 海盗们过去常把金子埋藏在那个洞里，可后来却没能取走。The pirates would often bury gold in the cave and then fail to collect it. 一支用这种新机器装备起来的探宝队进入了这个岩洞，希望找到埋藏着的金子。Armed with the new machine, a search party went into the cave hoping to find buried treasure. 当这个队的队长正在检查洞口附近的土壤时，那台机器显示出它下面埋有金子。The leader of the party was examining the soil near the entrance to the cave when the machine showed that there was gold under the ground. 队员们异常激动，就地挖了一个两英尺深的坑。Very excited, the party dug a hole two feet deep. 但最后找到的是一枚几乎一钱不值的小金币。They finally found a small gold coin, which was almost worthless. 队员们接着又把整个洞彻底搜寻了一遍，但除了一只空铁皮箱外，什么也没找到。The party then searched the whole cave thoroughly, but did not find anything except an empty tin trunk. 尽管如此，很多人仍然相信探宝器很快会探出值钱的东西来。In spite of this, many people are confident that the revealer may reveal something of value fairly soon. Lesson fifty-six. 比声音还快。Faster than sound. 旧式汽车的比赛每年举行一次。Once a year, a race is held for old cars. 去年有很多汽车参加了这项比赛。比赛开始之前，人们异常激动。A lot of cars entered for this race last year, and there was a great deal of excitement just before it began. 最漂亮的汽车之一是罗尔斯·罗伊斯生产的银轨汽车。One of the most handsome cars was a Rolls Royce Silver Ghost. 而最不寻常的一辆，则要数只有三个轮子的奔驰牌汽车了
The most unusual car was a Benz, which had only three wheels. 该车造于一八八五年，是参赛车中最老的一辆。Built in eighteen eighty five, it was the oldest car taking part. 在好一阵喧闹的爆炸声之后，比赛开始了。After a great many loud explosions, the race began. 很多汽车在途中就抛了锚，而有些驾驶员花在汽车底下的时间比坐在汽车里面的时间还长。Many of the cars broke down on the course, and some drivers spent more time under their cars than in them. 然而，还是有几辆汽车跑完了全程。A few cars, however, completed the race. 获胜的那辆车达到了时速四十英里。远远超过任何对手。The winning car reached a speed of forty miles an hour, much faster than any of its rivals. 它在接近终点时冲下了山坡，驾驶员费了好大劲才把车停下来。It sped downhill at the end of the race, and its driver had a lot of trouble trying to stop it. 这次比赛使每个人都挺开心。The race gave everyone a great deal of pleasure. It 虽然与现代汽车比赛大不相同，但激动人心的程度并不亚于现代汽车大赛。It was very different from modern car races, but no less exciting. Lesson fifty-seven. 您要买什么，夫人 ？Can I help you, madam? 一位穿着牛仔裤的妇女。站在一家高档商店的橱窗前 ，a woman in jeans stood at the window of an expensive shop. 她虽然犹豫了片刻，但终于还是走进了商店，要求把陈列在橱窗里的一件衣服拿给她看。Though she hesitated for a moment, she finally went in and asked to see a dress that was in the window. 接待她的售货员不喜欢她那副打扮。The assistant who served her did not like the way she was dressed. 轻蔑地看了他一眼后，便告诉他那件衣服已经卖出去了。Glancing at her scornfully, he told her that the dress was sold. 这位妇女怒气冲冲地走出了商店，决定第二天教训一下那个售货员。The woman walked out of the shop angrily and decided to punish the assistant next day. 第二天上午，他又来到这家商店，穿了一件裘皮大衣，一只手拎着一只手提包，另一只手拿着一把长柄伞。She returned to the shop the following morning, dressed in a fur coat, with a handbag in one hand and a long umbrella in the other. 找到那个无理的售货员后，他还要看昨天的那件衣服。After seeking out the rude assistant, she asked for the same dress. 那个售货员没有认出她是谁。这一回接待她的态度非常殷勤。Not realizing who she was, the assistant was eager to serve her this time. 费了好大劲儿，她爬进橱窗去取那件衣服。With great difficulty, he climbed into the shop window to get the dress. 这位妇女对那件衣服只看了一眼，就说不喜欢。As soon as she saw it, the woman said she did not like it. 她开心地迫使那位售货员把橱窗里几乎所有的东西都拿了出来，最后才买下了她最先要看的那一件。She enjoyed herself making the assistant bring almost everything in the window. Before finally buying the dress she had first asked for. Lesson fifty-eight. 是因祸得福吗 ？A blessing in disguise. 据说福林利这个小村里有一棵该诅咒的树。The tiny village of Friendly is said to possess a cursed tree. 就因为报上提到过这棵树，所以现在来福林利参观的人越来越多。Because the tree was mentioned in a newspaper, the number of visitors to Friendly has now increased. This tree is 50 years old. It was planted in the church.
，但只是近几年才得到了一个坏名声。The tree was planted near the church fifty years ago, but it is only in recent years that it has gained an evil reputation. 据说，谁要是触摸了这棵树，谁就会交上厄运。It is said that if anyone touches the tree, he will have bad luck. 如果谁摘了一片树叶，谁就会死去。If he picks a leaf, he will die. 很多村民相信此树已经害了不少人。Many villagers believe that the tree has already claimed a number of victims. 人们曾请求教区的牧师叫人把树砍掉，但他直到现在也没有同意。The vicar has been asked to have the tree cut down, but so far he has refused. He 指出，由于人们从全国各地纷纷前来参观这棵树，它成了一个有用的财源。He has pointed out that the tree is a useful source of income, as tourists have been coming from all parts of the country to see it. 尽管有上述种种说法。但游客们还是照常摘树叶和把他们的名字刻在树干上。In spite of all that has been said, the tourists have been picking leaves and cutting their names on the tree trunk. 然而，到目前为止，还没有一个人暴毙呢。So far, not one of them has been struck down by sudden death. Lesson fifty-nine. 进来还是出去？ In or out. 我家的狗雷克斯过去常坐在大门外面叫。Our dog Rex used to sit outside our front gate and bark. 每当他想到花园里来时，便汪汪叫个不停，直到有人把门打开。Every time he wanted to come into the garden, he would bark until someone opened the gate. 由于邻居们对狗叫很有意见。所以我丈夫花了几个星期的时间训练他用脚爪按住门栓，把自己放进来。As the neighbors complained of the noise, my husband spent weeks training him to press his paw on the latch to let himself in. 雷克斯很快成了开门的专家。Rex soon became an expert at opening the gate. 然而上星期我正要出去买东西时。发现他正待在花园里面靠门的地方。However, when I was going out shopping last week, I noticed him in the garden near the gate. 这次他叫着让人把他放出去。This time he was barking so that someone would let him out. 从那以后，他养成了另外一种坏习惯。Since then, he has developed another bad habit. 他从外面把门一打开。就走进花园，等着门自动关上。As soon as he opens the gate from the outside, he comes into the garden and waits until the gate shuts. 这之后，他就坐下，汪汪叫起来，直到有人来把他放出去。Then he sits and barks until someone lets him out. 出去之后，他又马上把自己放进来，接着再开始叫。After this. He immediately lets himself in and begins barking again. 昨天我丈夫把大门卸了下来，雷克斯很生气。此后我们便再也没有见到他。Yesterday, my husband removed the gate, and Rex got so annoyed we have not seen him since. Lesson sixty. 不算未来。The future. 在一个乡村集市上，我决定去拜访一位称作别林斯基夫人的算命人。At a village fair, I decided to visit a fortune teller called Madame Belinsky. 我走进她的帐篷，她叫我坐下。I went into her tent, and she told me to sit down. 我给了她一些钱后，她便查看着一个水晶球，说道。After I had given her some money. She looked into a crystal ball and said, "Your 的一个亲戚就要来看您了。A relation of yours is coming to see you. 他将于今天傍晚到达，并准备住上几天
She will be arriving this evening and intends to stay for a few days. The moment you leave this tent, you will get a big surprise. A woman you know well will rush towards you. She will speak to you and then she will lead you away from this place. That is all. As soon as I went outside, I forgot all about Madame Bolinsky because my wife hurried towards me. Where have you been hiding? She asked impatiently. Your sister will be here in less than an hour, and we must be at the station to meet her. We are late already. As she walked away, I followed her out of the fair. Lesson 61 Trouble with the Hubble the Hubble telescope was launched into space by NASA on April 20th, 1990, at a cost of over a billion dollars. Right from the start, there was trouble with the Hubble. The pictures it sent us were very disappointing because its main mirror was faulty. NASA is now going to put the telescope right, so it will soon be sending up four astronauts to repair it. The shuttle Endeavour will be taking the astronauts to the Hubble. A robot arm from the Endeavour will grab the telescope and hold it while the astronauts make the necessary repairs. Of course, the Hubble is above the Earth's atmosphere, so it will soon be sending us the clearest pictures of the stars and distant galaxies that we have ever seen. The Hubble will tell us a great deal about the age and size of the universe. By the time you read this, the Hubble's eagle eye will have sent us thousands and thousands of wonderful pictures. Lesson 62 After the fire Firemen had been fighting the forest fire for nearly three weeks before they could get it under control. A short time before, great trees had covered the countryside for miles around. Now, smoke still rose up from the warm ground over the desolate hills.
还会引起严重的水灾。Winter was coming on, and the hills threatened the surrounding villages with destruction. For heavy rain would not only wash away the soil, but would cause serious floods as well. 在大火最后被扑灭后，森林管理当局订购了好几吨一种生长迅速的特殊类型的草籽。When the fire had at last been put out, the forest authorities ordered several tons of a special type of grass seed, which would grow quickly. 飞机把这种草籽大量的撒播在地上。The seed was sprayed over the ground in huge quantities by airplanes. 飞机撒播近一个月后，开始下起雨来。The planes had been planting seed for nearly a month when it began to rain. 然而到那时，很多地方的草已经生了根。By then, however, in many places the grass had already taken root. 一片片的绿草开始出现在这片烧焦的土地上，代替了多少世纪以来一直生长在那里的参天大树。In place of the great trees which had been growing there for centuries, patches of green had begun to appear in the blackened soil. Lesson sixty-three. He 并不觉得好笑。She was not amused. 杰利米·汉普登交际甚广，是各种聚会上深受大家欢迎的人。Jeremy Hampton has a large circle of friends and is very popular at parties. 人人都钦佩他那绝妙的幽默感。人人就是说，除他六岁的女儿珍妮之外的每一个人。Everybody admires him for his great sense of humor. Everybody, that is. Except his six-year-old daughter Jenny. 最近，杰里米的一个最亲密的朋友请他在一个婚礼上祝词。Recently, one of Jeremy's closest friends asked him to make a speech at a wedding reception. 这正是杰里米喜欢做的事情。This is the sort of thing that Jeremy loves. 他认真准备了讲稿，带着珍妮一道去参加了婚礼。He prepared the speech carefully and went to the wedding with Jenny. 他的祝词里面加入了大量逗人的故事，自然大获成功。He had included a large number of funny stories in the speech, and of course, it was a great success. 他刚一讲完，珍妮就对他说，他要回家。As soon as he had finished, Jenny told him she wanted to go home. 这不免使杰利米有点扫兴，但他还是按照女儿的要求做了。Jeremy was a little disappointed by this, but he did as his daughter asked. 在回家的路上，他问珍妮是否喜欢他的祝词。On the way home, he asked Jenny if she had enjoyed the speech. 使他吃惊的是，他说他不喜欢。To his surprise, she said she hadn't. 杰利米问他为何不喜欢，他说他不愿意看到那么多的人嘲笑他。Jeremy asked her why this was so, and she told him that she did not like to see so many people laughing at him. Lesson sixty-four. 海峡隧道 The Channel Tunnel. 一八五八年，一位名叫艾梅托梅·德·甘蒙的法国工程师。带着建造一条长二十一英里、穿越英吉利海峡的隧道计划到了英国。In 1858, a French engineer, I M A Thomé de Gamond, arrived in England with a plan for a 21-mile tunnel under the English Channel. 他说可以在隧道中央建造一座平台。He said that it would be possible to build a platform in the center of the channel. This platform would be used as a bridge and a railway station. If it were to be built as a port and a railway station, it would be possible to build a platform in the center of the channel. If it were to be built as a port and a railway station, it would be possible to build a platform in the center of the channel. If it were to be built as a port and a railway station, it would be possible to build a platform in the center of the channel. The tunnel would be well ventilated if tall chimneys were built above sea level. 1860年
，一位名叫威廉诺的英国人提出了一项更好的计划。In 1860, a better plan was put forward by an Englishman, William Low. 他提议建一条双轨隧道。He suggested that a double railway tunnel should be built. 这样就解决了通风问题，因为如果有一列火车开进了隧道。他就把新鲜空气随之抽进了隧道。This would solve the problem of ventilation, for if a train entered this tunnel, it would draw in fresh air behind it. 四十二年以后，隧道实际已经开始建了。Forty-two years later, a tunnel was actually begun. 如果不是因为那时英国人害怕入侵，隧道早已建成了。If At the time, the British had not feared invasion; it would have been completed. 世界不得不再等将近一百年，才看到海峡隧道竣工。The world had to wait almost another one hundred years for the Channel Tunnel. 它于一九九四年三月七日正式开通，终于将英国与欧洲大陆连到了一起。It was officially opened on March seventh, nineteen ninety-four, finally connecting Britain to the European continent. Lesson sixty-five. 小象对警察 Jumbo versus the police. 去年圣诞节，马戏团老板吉米盖茨决定送些礼物给儿童医院 Last Christmas, the circus owner Jimmy Gates. Decided to take some presents to a children's hospital. He 打扮成圣诞老人，在由六个漂亮姑娘组成的仪仗队的陪同下，骑上一头名叫江伯的小象，沿着城里的主要街道出发了。Dressed up as Father Christmas and accompanied by a guard of honor of six pretty girls, he set off down the main street of the city riding a baby elephant. Called Jumbo. He 本该知道警察绝不会允许这类事情的发生 He should have known that the police would never allow this sort of thing. 一个警察走过来告诉吉米，他应该走一条小路，因为江伯阻碍了交通 A policeman approached Jimmy and told him he ought to have gone along a side street as Jumbo was holding up the traffic. 虽然吉米同意马上就走，但江伯却拒绝移动。Though Jimmy agreed to go at once, Jumbo refused to move. 十五个警察不得不用很大的力气把他推离主要街道。Fifteen policemen had to push very hard to get him off the main street. 警察虽然吃了苦头，但他们还是感到很有趣。The police had a difficult time, but they were most amused. Jiang Bo 一定有好几吨重。一个警察事后这样说。Jumbo must weigh a few tons, said a policeman afterwards. 值得庆幸的是，他没让我们抬他走。So it was fortunate that we didn't have to carry him. 当然，我们应该逮捕他。但由于他一贯表现很好，这次我们饶了他。Of course, we should arrest him, but as he has a good record, we shall let him off this time. Lesson sixty-six. 像蜜一样甜。Sweet as honey. 一九六三年，一架兰开斯特轰炸机在瓦利斯岛坠毁。那是南太平洋中一个很偏僻的小岛，位于萨摩亚群岛以西，距离群岛还有很长一段距离。In 1963, a Lancaster bomber crashed on Wallace Island, a remote place in the South Pacific, a long way west of Samoa. 飞机损坏的程度并不严重，但是多年来这起飞机失事已被遗忘。The plane wasn't too badly damaged, but over the years, the crash was forgotten and the wreck remained undisturbed. 于是，到了一九八九年，飞机失事二十六年后，在对小岛的一次航空勘察中
那架飞机被意外的发现了。Then in 1989, twenty-six years after the crash, the plane was accidentally rediscovered in an aerial survey of the island. 到了那个时候，状况良好的兰开斯特轰炸机实属罕见，值得抢救。By this time. A Lancaster bomber in reasonable condition was rare and worth rescuing. 法国政府让人把飞机包装起来，一部分一部分的搬回法国。The French authorities had the plane packaged and moved in parts back to France. 现在，一群热心人计划修复这架飞机。Now a group of enthusiasts are going to have the plane restored. 该飞机装配有四台罗尔斯·罗伊斯的莫林发动机，但是他们只需要修复其中的三台。It has four Rolls-Royce Merlin engines, but the group will need to have only three of them rebuilt. 想一想他们所感受到的惊奇和兴奋。当他们拆开包装箱时，他们发现第四台发动机就像蜂蜜一样甜，发动机完好无损。Imagine their surprise and delight when they broke open the packing cases and found that the fourth engine was sweet as honey, still in perfect condition. 一群蜜蜂把发动机当做了蜂房，发动机在蜂蜡中被完整的保存了下来。A colony of bees had turned the engine into a hive, and it was totally preserved in beeswax. Lesson sixty-seven. 火山 Volcanoes. 波兰科学家哈罗恩塔杰耶夫花了毕生的精力来研究世界各地的活火,火山和山洞 Harun Tazif, the Polish scientist, has spent his lifetime studying active volcanoes and deep caves in all parts of the world. 一九四八年，他去了刚果的基武湖。对一座后来被他命名为基图罗的新火山进行观察。In 1948, he went to Lake Kivu in the Congo to observe a new volcano, which he later named Kituro. 当火山正在猛烈的喷发时，塔杰耶夫有办法把帐篷搭在离他非常近的地方。Tazif was able to set up his camp. Very close to the volcano, while it was erupting violently. 尽管他设法拍了一些十分精彩的照片，但他却不能在火山附近停留太长的时间。Though he managed to take a number of brilliant photographs, he could not stay near the volcano for very long. 他发现有一股岩浆正向他流过来。He noticed that a river of liquid rock was coming towards him. 眼看就要将他团团围住，但塔杰耶夫还是设法及时逃离了。It threatened to surround him completely, but Tazif managed to escape just in time. 他等到火山平静下来，两天以后才能够返回去。He waited until the volcano became quiet. And he was able to return two days later. 这次他设法爬进了基图罗火山口，以便能拍摄照片和测试温度。This time, he managed to climb into the mouth of Kituro so that he could take photographs and measure temperatures. 塔杰耶夫经常冒这样的生命危险。Tazif has often risked his life in this way. 他能告诉我们的有关活火,火山的情况，比任何在世的人都要多。He has been able to tell us more about active volcanoes than any man alive. Lesson sixty-eight. 纠缠不休 Persistent. 我穿过马路以便避开他，但他看到我并朝我跑过来。I crossed the street to avoid meeting him, but he saw me. And came running towards me. 若再装作没看见他，已是没有用了。我只好向他招手。It was no use pretending that I had not seen him, so I waved to him. 我就怕遇到奈吉尔·戴克斯
I never enjoy meeting Nigel Dykes. 他从来都是无事可做。He never has anything to do. 不管你多忙，他总是坚持要跟你去。No matter how busy you are, he always insists on coming with you. 我得想办法不让他整个上午缠着我。I had to think of a way of preventing him from following me around all morning. 你好，奈吉尔，想不到在这儿见到你。我说。Hello, Nigel. I said. Fancy meeting you here. 你好，伊丽莎白。奈吉尔回答说。Hi, Elizabeth. Nigel answered. 我正不知道怎么消磨这一上午呢，直到见到你。I was just wondering how to spend the morning, until I saw you. You 不忙是吗 ？You're not busy doing anything, are you? 不不忙，我打算去。我回答。No, not at all. I answered. I'm going to. 我跟你一道去行吗？没等我说完话，他就问道。Would you mind my coming with you? He asked. Before I had finished speaking, 没关系，但我准备去牙医那里。我说了个谎。Not at all, I lied. But I'm going to the dentist. 那我也跟你去。候诊室里总有很多东西可供阅读。他回答。Then I'll come with you, he answered. There's always plenty to read in the waiting room. Lesson sixty-nine. 并非谋杀 ，but not murder. 我第三次接受驾驶执照考试。I was being tested for a driving license for the third time. 按照要求在车辆拥挤的道路上驾驶，我圆满的完成了。I had been asked to drive in heavy traffic and had done so successfully. 在街道把车开出城的指令后，我开始有了信心。After having been instructed to drive out of town, I began to acquire confidence. 确信我已通过考试，所以我几乎开始享受起这次考试。Sure that I had passed, I was almost beginning to enjoy my test. 主考人对我的驾驶想必是满意的。因为他微笑着说：“艾姆斯先生，只剩一项了。” The examiner must have been pleased with my performance, for he smiled and said, "Just one more thing, Mr. Ames." 让我们假设一个小孩子突然在你前面穿过马路。Let us suppose that a child suddenly crosses the road in front of you. 我一敲车窗，你必须把车停在五英尺之内。As soon as I tap on the window, you must stop within five feet. 我继续往前开着。过了一会儿，主考人砰砰地敲了起来。I continued driving, and after some time, the examiner tapped loudly. 虽然声音听得很清楚，但我过了好一会儿才做出反应。Though the sound could be heard clearly, it took me a long time to react. 我突然用力踩紧刹车踏板，结果我俩的身体都向前冲去。I suddenly pressed the brake pedal hard, and we were both thrown forward. 主考人伤心地看着我。The examiner looked at me sadly. 艾姆斯先生，他以悲伤的声调说。你刚刚把那个小孩压死了 ，Mr. Ames," he said in a mournful voice. "You have just killed that child." Lesson seventy. 危险的红色 Red for danger. 在一次斗牛时，一个醉汉突然溜达到斗牛场中间。During a bullfight, a drunk suddenly wandered into the middle of the ring. 人们开始大叫起来，但醉汉却没有意识到危险。The crowd began to shout, but the drunk was unaware of the danger. 当时那公牛正忙于对付斗牛士，但突然他看见了醉汉
。只见他大声说着粗鲁的话，手里挥动着一顶红帽子。The bull was busy with the matador at the time, but it suddenly caught sight of the drunk who was shouting rude remarks and waving a red cap. 对挑衅显然非常敏感的公牛，完全撇开斗牛士，直奔醉汉而来。Apparently sensitive to criticism, the bull forgot all about the matador and charged at the drunk. 观众突然静了下来。The crowd suddenly grew quiet. 可这醉汉像是很有把握似的。The drunk, however, seemed quite sure of himself. 当公牛逼近他时，他踉跄地往旁边一闪，牛扑空了。When the bull got close to him, he clumsily stepped aside to let it pass. 观众欢呼起来，醉汉向人们鞠躬致谢。The crowd broke into cheers, and the drunk bowed. 然而，此时又有三个人进入斗牛场，迅速把醉汉拉到安全的地方。By this time, however. Three men had come into the ring, and they quickly dragged the drunk to safety. 好像连牛也在为他感到遗憾，因为他一直同情地看着醉汉，直到他的背影消逝，才重新将注意力转向斗牛士。Even the bull seemed to feel sorry for him, for it looked on sympathetically until the drunk was out of the way. Before once more turning its attention to the matador. Lesson seventy one. 一个著名的大钟 A famous clock. 当你游览伦敦时，首先看到的东西之一就是大本钟，即那座从英国广播公司的广播钟，全世界都可以听到它的声音的著名大钟 When you visit London. One of the first things you will see is Big Ben, the famous clock, which can be heard all over the world on the BBC. 如果不是国会大厦在一八三四年被焚毁的话，这座大钟永远也不会建造。If the Houses of Parliament had not been burned down in 1834, the great clock would never have been erected. 大本钟得名于本杰明·霍尔爵士，因为当建造新的国会大厦时，他负责建造大钟。Big Ben takes its name from Sir Benjamin Hall, who was responsible for the making of the clock when the new Houses of Parliament were being built. 此钟不仅外形巨大，而且走时也非常准确。It is not only of immense size. But is extremely accurate as well. 格林尼治天文台的官员们每天两次派人矫正此钟。Officials from Greenwich Observatory have the clock checked twice a day. 当大钟打点的时候，你可以从英国广播公司的广播中听到，因为钟塔上接了麦克风。On the BBC, you can hear the clock when it is actually striking. Because microphones are connected to the clock tower, 大本钟很少出差错。Big Ben has rarely gone wrong. 然而有一次，他却把时间报错了。Once, however, it failed to give the correct time. 在钟塔上干活的一位油漆工把一只油漆桶挂在了一根指针上，把钟弄慢了。A painter who had been working on the tower hung a pot of paint on one of the hands and slowed it down. Lesson seventy-two. 蓝鸟汽车 A car called Bluebird. 杰出的赛车选手马尔科姆·坎贝尔爵士是第一个以每小时超过三百英里的速度驾车的人。The great racing driver, Sir Malcolm Campbell. Was the first man to drive at over three hundred miles per hour. He was the first man to drive at over three hundred miles per hour. 
He set up a new world record in September 1935 at Bonneville Salt Flats, Utah. 他驾驶的蓝鸟牌汽车是专门为他制造的。Bluebird, the car he was driving, had been specially built for him. 他的车身长三十英尺，有一个两千五百马力的发动机。It was over thirty feet in length and had a two thousand five hundred horsepower engine. 尽管坎贝尔达到了每小时超过三百零四英里的速度，但他很难把汽车控制住，因为在开始的行程中爆了一只轮胎。Although Campbell reached a speed of over three hundred four miles per hour. He had great difficulty in controlling the car because a tire burst during the first run. 挑战结束后，坎贝尔非常失望地得知，他的平均时速是二百九十九英里。After his attempt, Campbell was disappointed to learn that his average speed had been two hundred ninety-nine miles per hour. 然而，几天之后。有人告诉他说弄错了。However, a few days later, he was told that a mistake had been made. 他的平均时速实际上是三百零一英里。His average speed had been three hundred one miles per hour. 从那时以来，赛车选手已达到每小时六百英里的速度。Since that time. Racing drivers have reached speeds over 600 miles an hour. 很多年之后，马尔科姆爵士的儿子唐纳德踏着父亲的足迹，也创造了一项世界纪录。Following in his father's footsteps many years later, Sir Malcolm's son Donald also set up a world record. 同他父亲一样，他也驾驶着一辆名叫“蓝鸟”的汽车。Like his father, he was driving a car called Bluebird. Lesson seventy-three. 记录保持者 The record holder. 逃学的孩子们都缺乏想象力 Children who play truant from school are unimaginative. 他们通常能够做到的，至多也就是安静的钓上一天鱼，或在电影院里坐上八个小时。一遍遍地看同一部电影。A quiet day's fishing, or eight hours in a cinema seeing the same film over and over again, is usually as far as they get. 而有那么一个小男孩，他在逃学期间旅行了一千六百英里，从而使上述所有逃学的孩子们都相形见绌了。They have all been put to shame by a boy who. While playing truant, traveled one thousand six hundred miles. 他搭便车到了多佛，天快黑时钻进了一条船，想找个地方睡觉。He hitchhiked to Dover and, towards evening, went into a boat to find somewhere to sleep. 第二天早上，他醒来时，发现船在这段时间已经到了加来。When he woke up next morning. He discovered that the boat had, in the meantime, traveled to Kalai. 当男孩从船里爬出来时，谁也没有发现他。No one noticed the boy as he crept off. 从那里，他又搭上卡车到了巴黎。From there, he hitchhiked to Paris in a lorry. 司机给了他几块饼干和一杯咖啡，就把他丢在了城外。The driver gave him a few biscuits and a cup of coffee and left him just outside the city. 男孩截住的下一辆车没有像他希望的那样把他带到巴黎市中心，而是把他带到了法国和西班牙边界上的佩皮尼昂。The next car the boy stopped did not take him into the center of Paris, as he hoped it would. But to Perpignan, on the French-Spanish border, he was stopped there by a police officer. After he was taken to the border, he was picked up by a policeman 
and sent back to England by the local authorities. He, he has surely set up a record for the thousands of children who dream of evading school. Lesson seventy-four. Out of the limelight. An ancient bus stopped by a dry riverbed, and a party of famous actors and actresses got off. Dressed in dark glasses and old clothes. They had taken special precautions so that no one should recognize them. But as they soon discovered, disguises can sometimes be too perfect. This is a wonderful place for a picnic," said Gloria Gleam. 是再好不过的了，格洛利亚·布林克斯利·米尔斯表示同意。It couldn't be better, Gloria. Brinksley Mears agreed. 没有记者，没有影迷。No newspaper men, no film fans. 我们为什么不经常来这里呢 ？Why don't we come more often? 此时，另外两位演员伯克沃尔·斯林格和莫林·格里夫斯已经把两个大食品篮子提到了一片树荫下。Meanwhile, two other actors, Rockwall Slinger and Merlin Greaves, had carried two large food baskets to a shady spot under some trees. 当他们都已安排舒适时，一个陌生人出现了。When they had all made themselves comfortable, a stranger appeared. He looked very angry. Now you get out of here, all of you! He shouted. I'm sheriff here. You 们看到那个布告牌了吗？ Do you see that notice? 上面写着禁止野营，除非你们不识字。It says no camping, in case you can't read. 好了好了，司法官，罗克沃尔说，别使我们难堪。Look, sheriff," said Rockwall. "Don't be too hard on us." 我是罗克沃尔·斯林格，这位是莫林·格里夫斯。I'm Rockwall Slinger, and this is Merlin Greaves. Oh, 是吗？那位司法长官冷笑一声说道。Oh, is it? said the sheriff with a sneer. 好，我就是布林克斯利·米尔斯。我还有一个名字叫格洛利亚·格利姆。Well, I'm Brinksley Mears, and my other name is Gloria Gleam. Now you get out of here fast. Lesson seventy-five. 呼救信号 SOS. 不久前，一架轻型客机偏离了航线，在山区坠毁，飞行员丧生。When a light passenger plane flew off course some time ago, it crashed in the mountains. And its pilot was killed. 机上仅有的乘客，一位年轻的妇女和她的两个女婴却平安无事。The only passengers, a young woman and her two baby daughters, were unhurt. 此时正值隆冬季节。It was the middle of winter. 地上积着厚厚的雪。Snow lay thick on the ground. 这位妇女知道。The woman knew that the nearest village was miles away. 天黑下来的时候，她把提箱当作小床，把两个孩子放了进去
，又把所有能找到的衣服都盖在了孩子们身上。When it grew dark, she turned a suitcase into a bed and put the children inside it, covering them with all the clothes she could find. 夜里天冷得厉害。During the night, it got terribly cold. 这位妇女尽可能地靠近孩子，甚至自己也想钻进箱子里去，只是箱子太小了。The woman kept as near as she could to the children, and even tried to get into the case herself, but it was too small. 第二天一大早，她听到头顶上有飞机飞过。但不知道怎样才能发个信号。Early next morning, she heard planes passing overhead, and wondered how she could send a signal. 后来她有了一个主意。Then she had an idea. 她在雪地上踩出了 S O S 这三个字母。She stamped out the letters S O S in the snow. 幸运的很。一位飞行员看到这个信号，用无线电给最近的城镇发了报。Fortunately, a pilot saw the signal and sent a message by radio to the nearest town. 不久，一架直升飞机飞抵飞机失事现场，来搭救这几个幸存者。It was not long before a helicopter arrived on the scene to rescue the survivors of the plane crash. Lesson seventy six. 愚人节 April Fool's Day. 作为我们专题新闻节目的结尾，电视广播员说：“我们现在到克拉布利亚的通心粉田里。” To end our special news bulletin, said the voice of the television announcer, "We're going over to the macaroni fields of Calabria." 通心粉在这个地区已经种植了六百多年了。Macaroni has been grown in this area for over six hundred years. 两个主要种植者朱塞皮·莫尔道瓦和里卡多·布拉班特告诉我，他们一直期待着今年获得一个大丰收。收割工作比往年开始的要早些。Two of the leading growers, Giuseppe Maldova. And Ricardo Brabante, tell me that they have been expecting a splendid crop this year, and harvesting has begun earlier than usual. Here, you can see two workers. They have carefully planted three green onions in the green field. Here, you can see two workers who, between them, have just finished cutting three cartloads of golden brown macaroni stalks. 全村的人都日夜奋战，要赶在九月的雨季之前把今年的庄稼收获上来，打完场。The whole village has been working day and night, gathering and threshing this year's crop before the September rains. 在屏幕的右侧，您可以看到布拉班特太太本人，她已经帮了她的丈夫三十年了。On the right. You can see Mrs. Brabante herself. She has been helping her husband for thirty years now. Brabante 太太现在正和负责通心粉加工的当地加工厂的经理交谈。Mrs. Brabante is talking to the manager of the local factory where the crop is processed. 这最后一个镜头向您展示了收获之后将发生的事情。著名的克拉布利亚人吃通心粉大赛。This last scene shows you what will happen at the end of the harvest, the famous Calabrian macaroni eating competition. 目前的冠军是弗拉特里先生，自一九九一年以来，年年获胜。Signor Fratelli, the present champion, has won it every year since 1991. 今天四月一日，星期四的专题新闻节目到此结束。And that ends our special bulletin for today, Thursday, April first. 现在我们回到电视演播室。We are now going back to the studio.
Lesson seventy-seven. 一例成功的手术 A successful operation. 死于公元前八百年的一位埃及妇女的木乃伊刚刚接受了一次手术 The mummy of an Egyptian woman who died in eight hundred B.C. has just had an operation. 这是曾在底比斯神殿里当过歌手的塞潘姆特的木乃伊。The mummy is that of Shepenmut, who was once a singer in the Temple of Thebes. 由于在给这个木乃伊拍摄的 X 光片上有奇怪的斑点，所以医生们一直试图搞清这位妇女是否死于一种罕见的疾病。As there were strange marks on the X-ray plates taken of the mummy. Doctors have been trying to find out whether the woman died of a rare disease. 搞清的唯一办法就是手术 The only way to do this was to operate. 手术持续了四个多小时，非常难做，因为皮肤上覆盖着一层硬硬的树脂 The operation, which lasted for over four hours, proved to be very difficult. Because of the hard resin which covered the skin, 医生们从木乃伊身上取下一个切片，送去化验。The doctors removed a section of the mummy and sent it to a laboratory. 他们还发现了 X 光片所没有显示的东西，一个蜡制的杜瓦穆特夫神小塑像。They also found something which the X-ray plates did not show. A small wax figure of the god Dumatef. This kind of human-like statue is usually kept in the mummy. This god, which has the head of a cow, was normally placed inside a mummy. Doctors are still unsure about the death of this woman. The doctors have not yet decided how the woman died. They were worried that by cutting the mummy open, it would be cut into pieces. But fortunately, this situation did not happen. They feared that the mummy would fall to pieces when they cut it open. But fortunately, this has not happened. The mummy successfully survived the operation. Lesson seventy-eight. 最后一只吗 ？The last one. 读完一篇题为《吸烟与健康》的文章之后，我点上了一支香烟，来镇定一下自己紧张的神经。After reading an article entitled "Cigarette Smoking and Your Health," I lit a cigarette to calm my nerves. 我聚精会神而又愉快地吸着这支烟。I smoked with concentration and pleasure, as I was sure that this would be my last cigarette. 整整一个星期，我根本没有吸烟。在此期间，我妻子吃尽了苦头。For a whole week, I did not smoke at all, and during this time, my wife suffered terribly. 我具备的戒烟者通常表现出来的所有症状：脾气暴躁和食欲旺盛。I had all the usual symptoms of someone giving up smoking: a bad temper and an enormous appetite. 我的朋友们不断地向我递香烟和雪茄。My friends kept on offering me cigarettes and cigars. 每当我从口袋里掏出一包糖果时，他们都毫不掩饰地表现出他们对此感到非常好笑。They made no effort to hide their amusement whenever I produced a packet of sweets from my pocket. 这样过了七天以后，我去参加一次聚会。After seven days of this, I went to a party. 我周围的每个人都在吸烟，我感到非常不自在。Everybody around me was smoking, and I felt extremely uncomfortable. 当我的老朋友布莱恩极力劝我接受一支香烟时，我再也忍不住了。When my old friend Brian urged me to accept a cigarette, 
It was more than I could bear. 我内疚地接过一支，点上，心满意足地抽起来。I took one guiltily, lit it, and smoked with satisfaction. 一切又恢复了正常，为此我妻子十分高兴。My wife was delighted that things had returned to normal once more. 不管怎么说，正如布莱恩所指出的那样，戒烟是世界上最容易的事情。Anyway, as Brian pointed out, it is the easiest thing in the world to give up smoking. 他自己就已戒了很多次了。He himself has done it lots of times. Lesson seventy nine. 乘飞机 by air. 我在幼年的时候曾多次乘飞机旅行 I used to travel by air a great deal when I was a boy. 我的父母曾经住在南美洲，所以假期里我常从欧洲乘飞机到他们那里 My parents used to live in South America, and I used to fly there from Europe in the holidays. 我总是由一位空中乘务员照管，从未遇到过不愉快的经历。A flight attendant would take charge of me, and I never had an unpleasant experience. 我习惯了乘飞机旅行，只是有一次把我吓坏了。I am used to traveling by air, and only on one occasion have I ever felt frightened. 起飞之后，我们在城市上空滴滴的飞行。然后慢慢爬高。这时，飞机突然调转头来，飞回了机场。After taking off, we were flying low over the city and slowly gaining height. When the plane suddenly turned round and flew back to the airport. 在我们等待降落时，一位空中乘务员告诉我们，要保持镇静，待飞机一着陆。就马上不声不响地离开飞机。While we were waiting to land, a flight attendant told us to keep calm and to get off the plane quietly as soon as it had touched down. 飞机上的人都很着急，大家都急于想知道究竟出了什么事儿。Everybody on board was worried, and we were curious to find out what had happened. 后来我们才得知。飞机上坐了一位非常重要的人物。Later, we learned that there was a very important person on board. 有人报告警察说，飞机上安放了一枚炸弹。The police had been told that a bomb had been planted on the plane. 我们降落之后，飞机被彻底搜查了一遍。After we had landed, the plane was searched thoroughly. 幸运的是。什么也没有找到。五个小时后，我们又起飞了。Fortunately, nothing was found, and five hours later, we were able to take off again. Lesson eighty. 水晶宫 The Crystal Palace. 十九世纪最不寻常的建筑，也许要数水晶宫了。它是为一八五一年的世界博览会而建在海德公园的。Perhaps the most extraordinary building of the 19th century was the Crystal Palace, which was built in Hyde Park for the Great Exhibition of 1851. 这座水晶宫不同于世界上所有的其他建筑，因为它是用干涸玻璃建成的。The Crystal Palace was different from all other buildings in the world. For it was made of iron and glass. 它是有史以来最大的建筑物之一，因此人们从各个国家纷纷前来参观。It was one of the biggest buildings of all time, and a lot of people from many countries came to see it. 大量的商品从世界各地运送到了博览会。A great many goods were sent to the exhibition from various parts of the world. 参展的还有很多机器 There was also a great deal of machinery on display. 其中最奇妙的是内史密斯的蒸汽锤
the most wonderful piece of machinery on show was Nasmith's steam hammer. 尽管在当时，旅行不像现在这么容易，但汽船还是把成千上万的参观者从欧洲大陆送过了英吉利海峡。Though in those days traveling was not as easy as it is today, steamboats carried thousands of visitors across the Channel from Europe. 一到英国，火车就把他们送到了水晶宫。On arriving in England, they were taken to the Crystal Palace by train. 参观的人数总共是六百万。博览会的盈利用来建造博物馆和高等学校。There were six million visitors in all, and the profits from the exhibition were used to build museums and colleges. 后来，水晶宫被移到了伦敦南部。Later. The Crystal Palace was moved to South London. 在一九三六年被焚毁之前，它一直是世界上最著名的建筑物之一。It remained one of the most famous buildings in the world until it was burnt down in 1936. Lesson eighty one. 脱逃 Escape. 那个战俘杀死卫兵以后。When he had killed the guard, the prisoner of war quickly dragged him into the bushes. He was in the dark for a long time, and he was quickly changed into the prisoner's clothes. Working rapidly in the darkness, he soon changed into the dead man's clothes. Now he is wearing a black uniform, carrying a rifle, and walking rapidly in the darkness in the prison yard. Now, dressed in a blue uniform and with a rifle over his shoulder, the prisoner marched boldly up and down in front of the camp. He heard the noise of the prison yard. He could hear shouting in the camp itself. 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 They had just discovered that a prisoner had escaped. 正在此时，一辆黑色大轿车在军营门口停了下来，里面坐了四个军官。At that moment, a large black car with four officers inside it stopped at the camp gates. 军官们下了车，战俘立正站好，并在他们从他面前经过时敬了礼。The officers got out, and the prisoner stood to attention and saluted as they passed. They went out. The prisoner went out. They 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 went out. He was rather elderly, with gray hair and clear blue eyes. 战俘为他感到惋惜，但却没有别的选择。The prisoner felt sorry for him, but there was nothing else he could do. 当这个人走近时，战俘一拳把他打倒在地。As the man came near, the prisoner knocked him to the ground with a sharp blow. 然后跳进车里。以最快的速度把车开走了。Then, jumping into the car, he drove off as quickly as he could. Lesson eighty-two. 是妖还是鱼 ？Monster or fish? 渔夫和水手们有时声称自己看到过海里的妖怪。Fishermen and sailors sometimes claim to have seen monsters in the sea. 虽然人们常常对水手们讲的故事付诸一笑，但现在看来，人们有时看到的这些妖怪，很多不过是些奇怪的鱼。Though people have often laughed at stories told by seamen, it is now known that many of these monsters, which have at times been sighted, are simply strange fish. 一些异常的生物偶尔会被冲到岸上来。
但他们在海上却极少能被捕到。Occasionally, unusual creatures are washed to the shore, but they are rarely caught out at sea. 然而，不久前，在马达加斯加附近的海里，却捕到了一条奇怪的鱼。Some time ago, however, a peculiar fish was caught near Madagascar. 一条小渔船被一条咬住钩的强壮的大鱼拖到了几英里以外的海面上。A small fishing boat was carried miles out to sea by the powerful fish as it pulled on the line. 那位渔民意识到这根本不是一条普通的鱼，于是千方百计不让它受到丝毫伤害。Realizing that this was no ordinary fish, the fisherman made every effort not to damage it in any way. 当终于把它弄上岸后，人们发现它身长超过了十三英尺。When it was eventually brought to shore. It was found to be over thirteen feet long. It had a like a man's head, with big eyes, and a shining red and white skin, and a long white beard. It had a head like a horse, big blue eyes, shining silver skin, and a bright red tail. This fish was called Jiang Yu, and was brought to the museum. The fish, which has since been sent to a museum where it is being examined by a scientist, is called an oar fish. 人们很少能看到活着的这类动物，因为它们生活在六百英尺深的水下。Such creatures have rarely been seen alive by man, as they live at a depth of six hundred feet. Lesson eighty-three. 大选之后 After the elections, 前首相温特沃兹莱恩先生在最近的大选中被击败 The former prime minister, Mr. Wentworth Lane, was defeated in the recent elections. 他现在退出了政界，到国外去了 He is now retiring from political life and has gone abroad. 我的朋友帕特里克一直是莱恩先生的激进党的强烈反对者。My friend Patrick has always been a fanatical opponent of Mr. Lane's radical progressive party. 大选结束后，帕特里克来到了前首相的住处。After the elections, Patrick went to the former prime minister's house. 当他询问莱恩先生是否住在那里时，值班的警察告诉他，这位前首相落选后出国去了。When he asked if Mr. Lane lived there, the policeman on duty told him that since his defeat, the ex-prime minister had gone abroad. 第二天，帕特里克再次来到前首相的住处。On the following day, Patrick went to the house again. 昨天的那位警察正从门口慢慢走过。帕特里克上前问了和昨天同样的问题。The same policeman was just walking slowly past the entrance when Patrick asked the same question. 虽然那位警察这次有点疑心，但还是对他做了同样的回答。Though a little suspicious this time, the policeman gave him the same answer. 第三天，帕特里克又去了，提出了同前两天完全一样的问题。The day after, Patrick went to the house once more and asked exactly the same question. 这一次，警察火了。This time, the policeman lost his temper. 我昨天和前天都告诉过您了，他大叫着。I told you yesterday. And the day before yesterday, he shouted. Lane 先生在大选中被击败了 Mr. Lane was defeated in the elections. 他已经退出了政界，去国外了 He has retired from political life and gone to live abroad. 这我都知道，帕特里克说。可我就是喜欢听你说出这些 
I know, answered Patrick, but I love to hear you say it. Lesson 84 罢工 On Strike 公共汽车司机决定下星期罢工 Bus men have decided to go on strike next week. 罢工定于星期二开始 The strike is due to begin on Tuesday. 谁也不知道会持续多久 No one knows how long it will last. 司机们声称此次罢工会一直持续到旧工资和工作条件问题达成全面协议的时候为止。The busmen have stated that the strike will continue until general agreement is reached about pay and working conditions. 多数人认为此次罢工至少会持续一个星期 Most people believe that the strike will last for at least a week. 很多私人汽车的车主正准备为乘车上班的人们提供免费乘车的服务 Many owners of private cars are going to offer free rides to people on their way to work. This will relieve pressure on the trains to some extent. 与此同时，有一部分大学生自愿在罢工期间驾驶公共汽车。Meanwhile. A number of university students have volunteered to drive buses while the strike lasts. 所有的学生都是开车的能手，但在驾驶公共汽车之前，他们必须通过一项专门测验。All the students are expert drivers, but before they drive any of the buses, they will have to pass a special test. 学生们准备在两天后就接受测验。The students are going to take the test in two days' time. 即使这样，人们仍会感到上班有困难。Even so, people are going to find it difficult to get to work. 但到目前为止，公众已经向新闻界写信，表达他们对学生们的感激之情了。But so far. The public has expressed its gratitude to the students in letters to the press. 只有一两个人提出反对意见，说学生们会把车开得太快。Only one or two people have objected that the students will drive too fast. Lesson eighty-five. 活到老学到老。Never too old to learn. 我刚刚收到母校的一封信。通知我说，以前的校长斯图亚特·佩奇先生下星期就要退休了。I have just received a letter from my old school, informing me that my former headmaster, Mr. Stuart Page, will be retiring next week. 为了纪念这个日子，学校的学生，无论老同学还是新同学，将送他一件礼物。Pupils of the school. Old and new will be sending him a present to mark the occasion. 所有凑钱买此礼品的人都将把自己的名字签在一本大签名簿上。签名簿将被送到校长的家里。All those who have contributed towards the gift will sign their names in a large album, which will be sent to the headmaster's home. 我们不会忘记佩奇先生对我们既有耐心又充满理解，也不会忘记在我们不愿去上学时，他给予我们的亲切鼓励。We shall all remember Mr. Page for his patience and understanding, and for the kindly encouragement he gave us when we went so unwillingly to school. 很多老同学都准备参加下星期四为他举行的告别宴会。A great many former pupils will be attending a farewell dinner in his honor next Thursday. 佩奇先生退休的前一天，正好是他执教满四十年的日子。这真是奇妙的巧合。It is a curious coincidence that the day before his retirement. Mr. Page will have been teaching for a total of forty years. 他退休后将致力于园艺 After he has retired, he will devote himself to gardening. 
。对于他来说，这将是一种全新的爱好。For him, this will be an entirely new hobby. 但这没有关系，因为正如他常说的那样，人要活到老，学到老。But this does not matter, for. As he has often remarked, one is never too old to learn. Lesson eighty-six. 失控 Out of control. 当那人试图让快艇转弯时，方向盘脱手了。As the man tried to swing the speedboat round, the steering wheel came away in his hands. 他绝望地向他的伙伴挥手。他的伙伴在过去的十五分钟里一直在划水。He waved desperately to his companion, who had been water skiing for the last fifteen minutes. 他们两个还没来得及意识到究竟发生了什么事情，就被猛地抛入了海里。Both men had hardly had time to realize what was happening when they were thrown violently into the sea. 快艇撞上了一个浮标，但它仍在水面上快速行驶着。The speedboat had struck a buoy, but it continued to move very quickly across the water. 两个人刚开始向岸边游去，就突然饥饿地发现快艇正在转着圈行驶。Both men had just begun to swim towards the shore when they noticed with dismay. That the speedboat was moving in a circle. He now came straight towards them. Now, the speedboat was moving in a circle. 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 Now, the speedboat was moving 他们以最快的速度向前游去，因为他们知道快艇马上就要转回来。After it had passed, they swam on as quickly as they could, because they knew that the boat would soon return. 他们刚刚来得及游出危险区，快艇就又转完了一圈。They had just had enough time to swim out of danger. When the boat again completed a circle, 然而这一次它的速度慢多了。On this occasion, however, it had slowed down considerably. 汽油几乎已经用光。The petrol had nearly all been used up. 没过多久，噪音便彻底消失。快艇开始在水面上慢悠悠地漂流。Before long. The noise dropped completely, and the boat began to drift gently across the water. Lesson eighty-seven. 极好的不在犯罪现场的证据 A perfect alibi. 在凶杀发生的时候，我正坐在八点钟开往伦敦的火车上。那人说 At the time the murder was committed, I was traveling on the eight o'clock train to London. Said the man. "You 总是赶这样早的火车吗？" 探长问。"Do you always catch such an early train?" asked the inspector. 当然是的。那人回答。"Of course I do," answered the man. 我必须在十点钟上班。"I must be at work at ten o'clock." 我的雇主会证明我是按时到了那儿的。My employer will confirm that I was there on time. 晚一点的车也能送您按时上班吗 ？Would a later train get you to work on time? Asked the inspector. 我认为可以，但我从来不乘晚一点的车。I suppose it would, but I never catch a later train. 您几点钟到的火车站？ At what time did you arrive at the station? 七点五十分，我买了张报纸，等着车来。At ten to eight, I bought a paper and waited for the train. 你没有注意到有什么异常情况发生吗 ？And you didn't notice anything unusual? 当然没有。
Of course not. 我提醒您，探长说您讲的不是实话。I suggest, said the inspector, that you are not telling the truth. 您乘的不是八点钟的火车，而是八点二十五分的。这次车同样能使您按时上班。I suggest that you did not catch the eight o'clock train, but that you caught the eight twenty-five, which would still get you to work on time. 您看，在凶杀发生的那天早晨，八点钟的那次车根本没有发。You see, on the morning of the murder, the eight o'clock train did not run at all. 他在芬格林车站出了故障。It broke down at Fern Green Station and was taken off the line. Lesson eighty-eight. 困在矿井里 Trapped in a mine. 六个人被困在矿井里已经有十七个小时了 Six men have been trapped in a mine for seventeen hours. 如果不把他们尽快救到地面上来，他们就有可能丧生 If they are not brought to the surface soon, they may lose their lives. 然而，事实证明营救工作非常困难。However, rescue operations are proving difficult. 如果用炸药爆破，震动会引起矿顶塌落。If explosives are used, vibrations will cause the roof of the mine to collapse. 因此。营救人员在矿井的北侧钻了一个洞。Rescue workers are therefore drilling a hole on the north side of the mine. 他们准备用一种特制的容器把这六个人救上来。They intend to bring the men up in a special capsule. 如果不是因为土壤下面有一层坚硬的岩石，他们的营救工作仅用几个小时就可以完成了。If there had not been a hard layer of rock beneath the soil, they would have completed the job in a few hours. 实际情况是，他们已经连续钻了十六个小时了，但离钻透还早着呢。As it is, they have been drilling for sixteen hours, and they still have a long way to go. 与此同时，两个小时以前放下井区的一支麦克风。使井下的人可以与其亲属保持联系。Meanwhile, a microphone, which was lowered into the mine two hours ago, has enabled the men to keep in touch with their closest relatives. 虽然他们的食物和饮料都快消耗尽了，但这些人的心情很好，坚信他们很快就会出去。Though they are running out of food and drink. The men are cheerful and confident that they will get out soon. They have always been told that the rescue operations are progressing smoothly. They have been told that rescue operations are progressing smoothly. If they knew that the rescue operations are progressing smoothly, they would have been more confident. If they knew how difficult it was to drill the hole, they would have been more confident. If they knew how difficult it was to drill through the hard rock, they would lose heart. Lesson eighty nine. 口误 A slip of the tongue. 人们总要想尽办法去看不花钱的演出，哪怕是拙劣的演出 People will do anything to see a free show, even if it is a bad one. 当皮尤鸟食公司将在我们当地影院演出喜剧节目的消息传开后，我们都赶紧跑去观看 When the news got round. That a comedy show would be presented at our local cinema by the P and U Bird Seed Company. We all rushed to see it. We 们不得不排了好几个小时才进得场去。在演出开始前，场内肯定已经有好几百人了。We had to queue for hours to get in, and there must have been several hundred people present just before the show began. 不幸的是。这次演出是我们看过的最乏味的演出了。Unfortunately, the show was one of the dullest we have ever seen. 那些没能进到场内的人
，没有必要感到失望，因为很多应该出场的专业演员都没有来。Those who failed to get in need not have felt disappointed, as many of the artists who should have appeared did not come. 那天晚上唯一有趣的事情是节目开始时那个报幕员的开场白。The only funny things we heard that evening came from the advertiser at the beginning of the program. He 显然非常紧张，局促不安的在麦克风前站了好几分钟。He was obviously very nervous, and for some minutes stood awkwardly before the microphone. 但他刚一开口说话，人们便哄堂大笑起来。As soon as he opened his mouth. Everyone burst out laughing. We 们都明白那个可怜的人应该说些什么，而他实际说的却是。We all know what the poor man should have said, but what he actually said was. 这是屎尿鸟石公司，很棒的女士们，夜晚和先生们。This is the Pooh and E Seed Bird Company. Good ladies, evening and gentlemen. Lesson ninety. 晚餐吃什么 ？What's for supper? 油煎鱼加炸土豆片一直是英国人喜爱的一道菜，但是随着海洋里的烂捕烂捞，鱼已经变得越来越昂贵。Fish and chips has always been a favorite dish in Britain, but as the oceans have been overfished, fish has become more and more expensive. 因此，听说北海石油钻井平台上的潜水员受到巨型鱼类的恐吓，确实很让人吃惊。So it comes as a surprise to learn that giant fish are terrifying the divers on North Sea oil rigs. 钻井平台需要经常修理，潜水员常常要在水面一百英尺以下摸黑工作。他们曾在工作时被撞到他们身上的大鱼吓得惊慌失措。Oil rigs have to be repaired frequently, and divers, who often have to work in darkness a hundred feet under water, have been frightened out of their wits by giant fish bumping into them as they work. 现在他们有了特制的笼子，用来保护他们免受大鱼的侵袭。Now they have had special cages made to protect them from these monsters. These fish are not fish or snakes, but the kinds of fish people love the most, such as the fish and the snakes. But they are very large, sometimes up to 12 inches in size. The fish are not sharks or killer whales, but favorite eating varieties like cod and skate. Which grow to unnatural sizes, sometimes as much as twelve feet in length. These fish can grow so big is due to three factors. Three factors have caused these fish to grow so large. The warm water around the hot oil rigs has caused these fish to grow so large. The warm water around the hot oil pipes under the sea. 钻井平台工作人员抛到海里充足的食物。The plentiful supply of food thrown overboard by the crews on the rigs. 钻井平台周围根本没有捕鱼船只。The total absence of fishing boats around the oil rigs. 结果是，这些鱼就在可爱的、温暖的水流中吃呀吃，长呀长。As a result. The fish just eat and eat and grow and grow in the lovely warm water. 究竟谁吃谁呢 ？Who eats who? Lesson ninety one. 三人同栏 Three men in a basket. 一个飞行员发现了一只气球，它像是正飞往附近的一个皇家空军基地。A pilot noticed a balloon which seemed to be making for a Royal Air Force station nearby. He 马上把情况报告了该基地，但那里的人没有一个能解释这到底是怎么回事。
He informed the station at once, but no one there was able to explain the mystery. 控制塔上的官员得知这一消息后，非常气愤，因为气球有可能给飞机造成极大的危险。The officer in the control tower was very angry when he heard the news, because balloons can be a great danger to aircraft. 他说可能有人正对基地进行侦查，因此命令那个飞行员跟踪那个奇怪的飞行物。He said that someone might be spying on the station, and the pilot was ordered to keep track of the strange object. The pilot managed to circle the balloon for some time. He 看清了气球下面有三个人待在一只筐里，其中一个举着望远镜。He could make out three men in a basket under it, and one of them was holding a pair of binoculars. 当气球飞临基地上空时，飞行员看见有一个人在拍照。When the balloon was over the station, the pilot saw one of the men taking photographs. 不久，气球开始降落，在一个停机坪附近着了陆。Soon afterwards, the balloon began to descend, and it landed near an airfield. 警察被召来了，但他们却不能逮捕任何人，因为筐里是两名国会议员和一名基地的指挥官。The police were called in, but they could not arrest anyone, for the basket contained two members of parliament and the commanding officer of the station. 正如指挥官后来解释的那样，基地的这半边不知道那半边正在干什么。As the commanding officer explained later, one half of the station did not know what the other half was doing. Lesson ninety-two. 自找麻烦 Asking for trouble. 我回到家时，肯定已是凌晨两点左右了 It must have been about two in the morning when I returned home. 我按响了门铃，试图唤醒我的妻子，但她睡得很熟。于是我从花园的小棚里搬来了一个梯子，把它靠在墙边，开始向卧室的窗口爬去。I tried to wake up my wife by ringing the doorbell, but she was fast asleep. So I got a ladder from the shed in the garden, put it against the wall, and began climbing towards the bedroom window. 快要爬到窗口时，下面一个人用讽刺的口吻说：“我看不必在夜里这个时候擦窗子吧。” I was almost there when a sarcastic voice below said. I don't think the windows need cleaning at this time of the night. 我向下面看去。当我看清是一个警察时，差一点从梯子上掉下去。I looked down and nearly fell off the ladder when I saw a policeman. 我回答了他的话，但马上又后悔不该那样说。我是这样说的：我喜欢在夜里擦窗子。I immediately regretted answering in the way I did, but I said, "I enjoy cleaning windows at night." 我也是的。警察用同样的声调回答。So do I," answered the policeman in the same tone. 请原谅我打断了您。Excuse my interrupting you. 当一个人正忙着干活时，我是不愿意去打断他的。但请您跟我到警察局去一趟，好吗 ？I hate to interrupt a man when he's busy working, but would you mind coming with me to the station? 可我更愿意待在这儿。我说，您瞧，我忘带钥匙了。Well, I'd prefer to stay here, I said. You see, I've forgotten my key. 你的什么？他大声问。Your what? He called. 钥匙，我喊道。My key, I shouted. 幸运的很，这喊声惊醒了我的妻子。就在警察开始向我爬上来时，他打开了窗子。Fortunately, 
The shouting woke up my wife, who opened the window just as the policeman had started to climb towards me. Lesson 93. 崇高的礼物 A noble gift. 世界上最著名的纪念碑之一的自由女神雕像是在十九世纪时由法国人民赠送给美国的。One of the most famous monuments in the world, the Statue of Liberty, was presented to the United States of America in the 19th century by the people of France. 这座由雕刻家奥古斯特·巴索尔蒂设计的巨大雕像。The great statue, which was designed by the sculptor Auguste Bartholdi, took ten years to complete. This statue's body is made of stone, built by the sculptor Auguste Bartholdi. The actual figure was made of copper, supported by a metal framework, which had been especially constructed by Eiffel. 在雕像被运往美国之前，必须为它选好一块场地，同时必须建造一个基座。Before it could be transported to the United States, a site had to be found for it, and a pedestal had to be built. 场地选在了纽约港入口处的一个岛上。The site chosen was an island at the entrance of New York Harbor. 到一八八四年。一座高度达一百五十一英尺的雕像在巴黎树立起来了。By 1884, a statue which was 151 feet tall had been erected in Paris. 第二年，它被拆成若干小块，运往美国。The following year, it was taken to pieces and sent to America. 到一八八六年十月底。这座雕像被重新组装起来，由巴索尔蒂正式赠送给美国人民。By the end of October 1886, the statue had been put together again, and it was officially presented to the American people by Bartholdi. 从那时起，这座伟大的纪念碑。对通过纽约港进入美国定居的千百万人来说，就一直是自由的象征。Ever since then, the great monument has been a symbol of liberty for the millions of people who have passed through New York Harbor to make their homes in America. Lesson ninety four. 未来的冠军 Future champions. 实验证明。儿童在很小的时候就可以开始学习游泳。Experiments have proved that children can be instructed in swimming at a very early age. 在洛杉矶的一个特设的游泳池里，孩子们甚至在还没学会走路时，就已经能熟练的在水下屏住呼吸了。At a special swimming pool in Los Angeles. Children become expert at holding their breath underwater, even before they can walk. 两个月的婴儿并未显得不愿意入水 Babies of two months old do not appear to be reluctant to enter the water. 他们很快便适应了游泳，以致能捡起池底的物品 It is not long before they are so accustomed to swimming. That they can pick up weights from the floor of the pool. These small swimming exercises are a very popular game in the water polo tournament. A game that is very popular with these young swimmers is the underwater tricycle race. Tricycle being placed on the floor of the pool in the swimming pool. Tricycles are lined up on the floor of the pool, seven feet underwater. 孩子们比赛，看谁先到达游泳池的另一端。The children compete against each other to reach the other end of the pool. 很多孩子用脚蹬车，但多数孩子更愿意推或是拉着三轮车。Many pedal their tricycles, but most of them prefer to push or drag them. 有些孩子能够跑完游泳池的全长。而不用露出水面换气
Some children can cover the whole length of the pool without coming up for breath even once. They may win the Olympic gold medal. They can only answer the question in the right order. Whether they will ever become future Olympic champions, whether they will ever become future Olympic champions, only time will tell. With this, they are telling us that the people who can't swim for five minutes without making a sound should be celebrated as heroes and not just heroes. Meanwhile, they should encourage those among us who cannot swim five yards before they are gasping for air. Lesson ninety-five. 纯属虚构 A fantasy. 当艾斯卡罗比亚国的大使回到家吃午饭时，把他的夫人吓了一跳。When the ambassador of Escalopia returned home for lunch, his wife got a shock. 他面色苍白，衣服也搞得不成样子。He looked pale, and his clothes were in a frightful state. 发生了什么事？他问。What has happened? She asked. 你的衣服怎么搞得一塌糊涂 ？How did your clothes get into such a mess? 灭火器弄的，亲爱的。大使冷冷的回答。A fire extinguisher, my dear. Answered the ambassador dryly. Today morning, students lit the fireplace for the ambassador. University students set the embassy on fire this morning. Yeah, his wife screamed. Good heavens! Exclaimed his wife. That you were at what place? And where were you at the time? I and my husband were at the office. The ambassador said. 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 I was in my office as usual," answered the ambassador. 地下室突然着火。The fire broke out in the basement. 我当然马上下去了，但那个傻瓜霍斯特把灭火器对准了我。I went down immediately, of course, and that fool Horst aimed a fire extinguisher at me. 他认为是我着火了。He thought I was on fire. I must definitely get that fellow posted. 大使夫人继续提出问题。她突然又发现丈夫的帽子上有个洞。The ambassador's wife went on asking questions when she suddenly noticed a big hole in her husband's hat. 那么你对那又作何解释呢？她问。And how can you explain that? She asked. 那个嘛，大使说，有人向我办公室窗户开了一枪。Oh, that," said the ambassador. Someone fired a shot through my office window. 真够准的，是不是 ？Accurate, don't you think? 幸亏我当时没戴帽子。Fortunately, I wasn't wearing it at the time. 如果真带着他，我现在就不能回家来吃午饭了。If I had been, I would not have been able to get home for lunch. Lesson ninety-six. 亡灵返乡。The dead return. 日本每年过一次亡灵节。A festival for the dead is held once a year in Japan. 这个节日是个欢乐的日子。因为在这一天，据说逝去的人要回到他们的家里来，活着的人则对他们表示欢迎。This festival is a cheerful occasion, for on this day, the dead are said to return to their homes, and they are welcomed by the living. 因为预料到他们在经过长途旅行之后会感到饥饿，所以为他们摆放好了食品。As they are expected to be hungry after their long journey, food is laid out for them. 特制的灯笼挂在各家的门外，为的是帮助亡灵看清道路。Specially made lanterns are hung outside each house to help the dead to find their way. 整个夜晚，人们载歌载舞。All night long, people dance and sing. 一大早。人们便把为逝者摆放的食品扔进河中或海里
，因为人们认为活着的人吃了这些东西是不吉利的。In the early morning, the food that had been laid out for the dead is thrown into a river or into the sea, as it is considered unlucky for anyone living to eat it. 在靠海的城镇中。头天夜里挂在大街小巷的小灯笼，在节后就放在了水里。In towns that are near the sea, the tiny lanterns, which had been hung in the streets the night before, are placed into the water when the festival is over. 成千上万只灯笼慢慢飘向大海，指引着亡灵返回另一个世界。Thousands of lanterns slowly drift out to sea. Guiding the dead on their return journey to the other world. This is a moving scene. People are gathered in the depths of the sea, waiting for the lanterns to go away until they are no longer seen. This is a moving spectacle. For crowds of people stand on the shore, watching the lanterns drifting away until they can be seen no more.